we're we're finally here in the house. What time is it? Eleven twenty-one Eastern Standard Time. We got nothing to do anyway, right? On this beautiful Thursday. Hope everyone getting their errands done, their odds and ends, their appointments. Definitely not taking any animals to any veterinary clinics or anything, though, of course. Always upselling you. You know how it goes around here in Stratford, Connecticut. But today, we have something of a different sort. Usually, we do the pre-show style show on these Thursdays. Currently, we're we at 40 it. likes and climbing. 40 likes. It'd be great if we could get a bunch because we have almost 200 viewers. It'd be great if we could get some more likes. It helps the stream and the channel in general for discoverability purposes, okay? Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that. That's my producer, DSP, there helping us there. Thanks so much for that. It, is, it does help the stream for discoverability purposes. <laughs> Anyways, I'll stop laughing at that one day. But before we get to the plunge today, the plunge is going to be all about the plunge today. We're taking a plunge into the car accidents of DSP, the many car accidents of DSP. And um, before we get to that, I want to show you this big, big brain idea I have that's going to be a new kind of ongoing project, okay? So I want to introduce you to the new project, new style project been in the works for years, and it is entitled the WPIG Iceberg, okay? I'm going to bring it up now. WPIG Iceberg in the house. This is the WPIG Iceberg. And what the idea is, is every time we can do it, I want to say weekly because I can't always do it weekly, but whenever we get a plunge, we're going to put the subject of the plunge into the WPIG DSP Iceberg. So that will let us, you know, that'll, I think, and hopefully we can make it. All I can, right. like, Thank you oh, for re-upping your membership. I appreciate that. Big ups with Knox. You're a legend. Big ups. Uh, but then we can have a better idea of like, you know, things we've covered, things we have yet to cover, that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it'd be nice to have one place where all the things that we covered on the show are in the same place. So obviously today we're covering the, the uh, car accident. And then we can figure out where it goes on the iceberg here. All right, so, and it can't be something like, you know, there's so much sit that is not on here yet, but it has to be something we covered on this show in particular, right? So it has to be something we've covered. So, so far I have Jeff the Hero, which is a very deep cut. We have the CT Bucket List, very deep cut. Machinima, not so deep, right? Not such a deep cut. Alpha Omega Sin, middle of the road, right? Taco Chan, very deep. Faye, even deeper, right? Um, you know, Monkey Spank, middle of the road deep, you know what I'm saying? So like, We'll cover this too. And also I have one for the car, the car crash after today. So let's do the plunge for the car crash. And then we'll see where all these items go uh, on the great WPIG DSP iceberg. So like, let's just do one. Okay, let's do Machinima. Fuck it. You know, where all right. Sh- Thank uh-oh. you for re-upping your punch. membership. I appreciate that. Big up, South Forward Punch. You're a legend. All right. I- Thank you for re-upping your membership. I Big appreciate up, that. Big Darko. So for me, I think Alpha Omega Sin. All right. Thank you for re-upping your membership. I appreciate that. So many re-ups. You guys are legends. Alpha Omega Sin, for me, would probably be what? In the middle of the road? He'd be like here, you know? And I'm hoping to have like a, I have a command or something. So like I could put that in chat and you could watch the video directly talking about the one we talked about, Alpha Omega Sin. But anyways, I'm already late. We're not going to do this right now. But that's the idea. We're going to fill up this WPIG iceberg as much as possible. Once a week, once every couple weeks, whatever. But anyways, let's get to the issue at hand today. And that is DSP and the many, not singular, many, many uh, accidents of DSP. So, of course, you think, a I, I guy with two names, Alpha Omega, is much higher than that, probably. I, don't, I think that's something that if you haven't been around for like a few years, you might not know about it. But anyways, that's, that's for another day. That's for another time. Let's get into it. So I'm going to start today with something that's not about the car accident. As usual, we're going to chronological order here from the things I show you. And we're going to check what DSP has said about a certain topic. And in this case, we're going to, talk all, we're going to listen to all the stories about the car accident. Uh, and it does intertwine very closely with the back injury. Because the stories have changed throughout the years, right? A- as we've seen, okay? So let's look, listen first to a story about the back injury. And now we can hear... You know, let's hear about in two, September 5th, 2013, how did the back injury come to be? Okay. And we can see if that story changes as we hear more about the car incident, car accidents, accidents. Okay. 
Here we go. Let's hear DSP talk about a back injury in September 5th of 2013. Let's go. To a quick question from Twitter, and then we're going to do part three where I'm going to answer some more of these questions, and we're going to do the stream chat questions, okay? okay? So this question was from Twitter. It was from the King of Storm, and he says, how did your back injury start? Um, I've talked about this in the past, but it was quite a long time ago, so okay. I figured this may be a time to get everybody up to speed on what's yes. going on with my back. Get us up to speed on what's going on with your back. <laughs> Yes, please get us up to speed with what's going on with your back. Very normal statement. I have a severely herniated disc Whoa. between my L4 and L5 vertebrae in my back. Okay. Shout outs to L4 and L5. Okay. It's not something that happened immediately. It was like I got a car accident. Someone hit me in the back. I fell. It was nothing like that whatsoever. It was a gradual thing over the course of my life. Okay, gradual thing that happened over the course of my life. Gradual thing that happened over the course of my life. I just want you to remember that stuff. I can remember when I was a small child in uh, grammar school that... Pick, pick, we pick. What are we digging for? We're going deep. We have lockers. That's right. We didn't have lockers in our grammar school, so we had nowhere to store our books. So for a full day's worth of books, we had to carry it on our backs all day long. Whoa. So for what was it? A good, you know, kindergarten through eighth grade, eight years of my life when my back was developing, I had a heavy <laughs> ass, you know... 20 pound backpack on weighing me down i'm sure that might have been a contributing factor to why my back has problems okay okay so now it's about the grammar side grammar side phil at grammar school carrying 20 pounds of back as his back was developing so man that school everyone that went to that school must have had a problem maybe that's why he hates backpacks <laughs> okay um you know, over the years, I was kind of a very physically active guy. I okay. used to play some sports. In addition to that, I used to play competitive Street Fighter. Competitive Street Fighter used to be held in arcades, not Whoa. at home sitting on a couch, playing on your couch with a gamepad or a joystick. It was all standing up for hours on end in arcades. In addition to that... <laughs> he said standing up in an arcade is physical? Is that what he said? Hang on. <laughs> that, I think he's saying that makes him active. I used to play some... some here that might have been a contributing factor to why my back has problems okay, okay? Here we go. Here we go. um you know over the years i was kind of a very physically active guy I, okay yes it was i <laughs> i was not wrong i thought he was saying it had like he said standing up at guys with 70 <laughs> likes if you're having a good time tonight you give the stream a like we hit 100 likes we'll do a celebratory bubble blow that would be swell if you could do that Pick up 70 I used to play some sports. In addition to that, I used to play competitive Street Fighter. Competitive Street Fighter used to be held in arcades, not <laughs> at home sitting on a couch, playing on your couch with a gamepad or a joystick. It was all standing up oh my God. for hours on end in arcades. Holy in addition shit. to that, most of the jobs that I had until I got out of college were jobs where you're standing, whether it was fast food, whether it was selling computers or products at Best Buy or Circuit City. I was constantly on my feet all the time. And so I think he's... <laughs> He is saying standing is physical standing standing <laughs> because of that again the fact that when my developmental years my back always had a big heavy weight on it during the course of my life i always my developmental years my back always had a heavy weight on it 20 pounds 20 pounds at jobs where i was standing up i had jobs when i was standing up that could have contributed to my back <clears throat> okay but I can point out the one point, okay, the one point in my life where I realized I have a serious back issue. Okay, my go. back had been giving me pain, okay, soreness. Back had been supporting with pain. Had, <laughs> his back was contributing pain. Some shooting, like nerve pain. Oh, shooting. And it was really pissing me off. Rest in peace, T. Carter. Off, I didn't know, you know, what was it? What was the source of this pain? The and I remember this one day I was actually playing football. It wasn't, oh, football. you know, physical. It was touch football in a local park. And it was uh, someone's birthday. <laughs> like the, the point over? <laughs> birthday, I believe. Where's the park? Hang on. Where's the park? Source of this pain. And I remember this one day I was actually playing football. It wasn't, you know, physical. It was touch football in a local park. Oh, over there. And it okay. was uh, someone's it's birthday, on the I believe. One of my <laughs> it's over there on the left. Friends' birthdays. And we were playing it in touch football. And touch I remember football. playing it. And after playing it for about two hours, my fucking back hurt so badly. Whoa. And I was like, what the hell was it? Was I, I didn't, I don't remember, like, was it because the ground was too hard and I was running on rocks and, you know, I was trying. <laughs> the, ground, the ground was too hard and you're running on rocks. To rationalize what was it that was the problem. This is incredible. Like, how do you. How was there not more? This is 2013, so this is still early days. Sir AJ, Sir Evil AJ, released his his. Uh, this is how you don't play this year. 
But like, how did more people not say this is insane back then, man? The comments are all fucking supportive. It's incredible. With my back, and then finally I said, I can't, I, I can't take it anymore. I gotta go to a doctor. Went to a doctor. He took X-rays and tried to tell me there was nothing wrong. <laughs> I said, Doctor, are you out of your mind? Right now, I'm talking to you on the phone. I'm in excruciating pain in my back, and you're gonna tell me there's nothing wrong. Great I don't guys, think you know. Our goal is 100 likes on the stream. We're at 90. Go on, we get 10 more likes, please. Karen to the doctor. Uh, you serious, doctor? You, this x-ray? Uh, you reading this right, sir? And tried to tell me there was nothing wrong. <laughs> I said, doctor, are you out of your mind? Right now I'm talking to you on the phone. I'm in excruciating pain <laughs> in my- Oh, God. I would pay a million dollars. I don't have a million dollars, but I would get it together to hear that phone call. Doctor, if anyone recorded that. Back, and you're going to tell me there's nothing wrong. I don't think you know what the hell you're talking about. She says, all right, I'm going to send you to an MRI. Went to an MRI. They found my disc uh -oh. in my lower back was to the point where it was going to explode. That's how severely hurting. <laughs> it was a level three explosion coming. It's explosion, guys. This is, he's like a terrorist. He was basically a walking terrorist, ready to explode. Bombs strapped to his, he couldn't even fly because he basically had explosives inside his body. It's incredible. It was, it was to that point. And he said, listen, if you don't immediately make lifestyle changes. Yeah, this is the best because this is, Thank you oh, all here we go. The engagement today. I appreciate it. I appreciate this engagement. Let him have it, Phil. Let him have it. Come on. Don't explode the disc though. Let him have it. Come on. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That wasn't a very good one. It kind of sucked. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't a very good one. Not going to lie. But this is how dangerous it was. It was going to explode. But surgery? Nah, nah. Just lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes. At the risk of an explosion, what's the solution? Hey, lifestyle changes. We'll clear that right up, sir. You tell me. You tell me how close to explosion that was. You know what the doctor said? I, this is what I'm guessing. Of course, I don't know if it's true. Doctor calls. To say this dude's a fucking douchebag. Just tell him it's really bad, but then tell him some lifestyle changes he can make that'll make the pain go away. The doctor's like, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, uh, yeah, I got it. That, that's all he did. It's like, oh my God, this disc is like a TNT. To fix it though, all you got to do is do some lifestyle changes. That's it. <laughs> You're going to be in serious problems. You're going to be in operations, you know, to fix this, and it might not even work. You're going to be in serious trouble for the rest Whoa. of your life. I said, all right. So I had to make life changes. I stopped doing heavy physical activity, heavy lifting of stuff. I used to drive <laughs> everywhere. I, I don't drive. on. Here's the heavy physical stuff he couldn't do. Drive and anything else, sir? The highway anymore <laughs> because my back hurts so badly. Anything else you were doing before? Like you said, you can't can't lift heavy things, okay? <laughs> and it actually does stress out that portion of your back when you are driving on the highway. What if I had was driving on the highway 65 miles per hour and I get a back spasm or something, or a car swerves in front Whoa. of me, I need to brake and I can't because my back hurts and you know I'm delayed, I could die. Or, God forbid, I could kill someone else. It would be very irresponsible for me to be driving on the highway with my back in the condition that it's in, okay? Um, I can't do, Physical, you know, like working out. I used to lift weights. I can't do that anymore. I used to work. I, <laughs> I used to work out and we get the curl. Watch this curl pump. I can't do physical, you know, like working out. I used to lift weights. Boom. I can't do that Hit anymore. Hit him with it. Look at this. Um, that curl. I can't do physical, you know, like working Hit out. With I used it. to lift Boom. weights. I can't do that anymore. Because it's going to put stress on my back. On so what I've done is I've made <laughs> lifestyle adjustments oh, to find a way to keep my weight down, by the way. If you haven't noticed, over the past few years, I've Whoa. done stuff to try to lose some weight oh, so definitely. that I'm not as heavy as I was. And I think the last time I weighed myself, I was the, the lightest. I'm around 207 now, nice. which is pretty good. Obviously, my goal weight is probably around 190. Um, but I'm doing good with my diet. You know, not going overboard, eating, you know, fatty foods. And that's funny because people watch my DSP tries it. He always eats fast food. It's not the case. Most of the time I'm eating healthy stuff. I'm eating turkey healthy burgers. Stuff. I'm eating veggie burgers. I'm having, you know. <laughs> turkey burgers, veggie burgers. <laughs> oh, God. How long can he, how hard can you push X on that? <laughs> I was eating turkey burgers, veggie burgers, right. Healthier stuff, and I eat way less than I used to as well. Whoa. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the story with my back. Now, now, here's the thing. I've always held off from getting a back surgery to right, fix my back out. because uh, it's very risky. The back surgery that they do, they, it's very intrusive. They have to cut you open, open you up, you know, take the disc, cut the disc out, fuse the spine physically. It's very <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, I got to do Wolverine-style operation here. They got to open up my disc, pour the liquid in.
the out, what is it called? I forget what it's called. Entomaltium or whatever into the disc, fuse the disc. I'm assuming it's very risky surgery. And I actually know a couple people who got it and are much better. I also know a couple people who got it and they're actually worse than they were X, before. X, it's very touch X. and go, it's not foolproof. The good news is, I know I, hundreds of people. Some people got it, it worked. Some people it didn't. Right, right, heard right. That they have now, they now have it's new. It only came out this year. A new method to do the same kind of operation that's less intrusive using lasers. Oh. All right. Oh, lasers, and what I'm actually dude. thinking of doing is that next year, uh, next year, hopefully, I'll get to move. If I do move <laughs> out of Connecticut and I move in with my girlfriend, at least I'm living with someone. So if I can go get this <laughs> surgery and get my back fixed, and let's say I'm, I'm, I'm laid up for two weeks because See, of it, folks. I at least have someone who's with me who can help me to get around and stuff. That's the problem right now. Is if I were to have the surgery right now, mm -hmm. I'm bedridden. I'm bedridden for a month, and who's going to be bringing me food? Who's going to help me get around? Who's going to, you know what I mean? It Jesus, would, I, already given Leanna jobs. Couldn't do it. I live alone. Um, I God need to be able to it. move to a bigger, better place where number one, it'd be easier for me to get around if I do have the surgery, and number two, someone who's living with me to help me. And I don't have that right now. That's really, I have to be honest with everyone. That is one of the major reasons why this year, and I, I've apologized to everyone for this. There's been a little bit more negativity around me. All right. I was originally hoping because there's been a little bit more. Oh God, we can't spend this much time on this first video. We cannot do this. But I got to hear, how did his back injury increase the negativity around him? Hang on to your fucking hats. I apologize to everyone for this. There's been a little bit more negativity around me because I was originally hoping that this year would have been the year that I could have moved and I could have moved in with my girlfriend and I could have maybe gotten the back surgery and improved my life. And because I got the pay cut from Machinima earlier this year, because okay. my views are obviously down this year, no one's arguing that, I've unfortunately been forced to not be able to do that. I had to hold off. And now I'm kind of up in the air, touch and go, because I don't know what to end of this year. Is Machinima going to renegotiate my contract again? Am I going to be making Spoilers, even less money the next year? Now i got to put it off again. And this is what's pissing me off, is that I just want to be healthy. And <laughs> I've had to hold off on it now in a major way because of all I just want to be healthy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I just want to be healthy. You want to move to a nice new house, which you're going to do anyway, even though you already seem to know it's not a good idea. Right? He's saying it right now. All this. And people, this is what gets me. He talks about views all the time. All he cares about is money. You know, maybe there's a reason behind it. Maybe because I would actually like to be physically able to do some of the stuff I used to be able to do. Maybe I wouldn't like to be, feel like I'm a cripple for the rest of my goddamn life. And maybe that's why I'm so concerned about this stuff. You know what I mean? So people don't. <laughs> so now he's, oh, now we're. We're, uh, we're, we're saying begging is the only reason he's talking about money, guys, is because he wants to be healthy, guys. How dare you? How dare you? And remember, thank you, big guy. He never gets the surgery. Also, someone else that's done this, of course, they don't beg as much. But Amberlynn Reed also recently was she talked about getting the, the weight loss surgery for so long and then doesn't do it. I wonder if it's a narcissism thing or like fear of surgery thing that narcissism narcissists have in common like they can just deal without the surgery they don't need or something we have to ask steve about that when he gets when he gets back and, and ready to roll I'm, I'm sure right now steve's in the process not to make a joke about this i do wish steve the best obviously he's getting his back fused together right now they're putting in the antimantium and the oracalcum and putting it into his back and fusing it together hope it works out steve brother Thinking for the rest you. of my goddamn life and maybe that's why i'm so concerned about this stuff you know what i mean so people don't seem to understand a lot of stuff that uh, that i talk yeah, about dude i think you're right on that it's a fear of having the problem solved and then they have nothing else to climb about yeah that might be it they always misinterpret it and shit and uh, the bottom line is i just would really like to improve my life and i can't do it right now i can't do it i, I would like to improve my life but i can't look do it into right the now. surgery because mm -hmm. i would have no way right. to be basically taken care of when i am laid up after the surgery so i'm really hoping that the end of this year things are positive if not whether it's Machinima or not, we're going to have to see what happens, but I'm going to have to find a way to turn things around and, uh, and stay positive and keep going, and hopefully next year I'll be able to move and I'll be able to get the surgery and things will be better. Okay, that's it. So the only reason I played that, nothing to do with the car crash, but I want you to remember the key points is, after all that nonsense, the key fucking point is it was a gradual thing. It was not one thing, okay? You got that right. You heard it. I heard it. Let's move on. The first reference to a, to a uh, car, car, uh, this is fucking default view. Uh, to a to a car accident happens in 2000. The next reference the, is May, 2014, May 22nd. There's a little bit of backstory here we got to listen to. I want to hear the prompt story. I have to. But he talks about the car a lot here. So let's hear about this is his first time talking about the car accident itself. We did hear that the back injury was not uh, was, was not caused by any single incident. Let's hear how it goes. May 22nd, 2014, less than a year after that video. Yes, then we'll take a break and we'll do the final part. It's going to be a four-parter this time, guys. I apologize because of the technical difficulties and everything going on. All right. All right. This one is from Tringetto. He says, before I share my question, I need to share with you a story. I'm a senior in high school, and as a senior, a lot of events have opened up for me, one of them being prom night. I a lot of events have opened up? 
Who said talk like that? A lot of events have opened up for me. This tells you a little bit into his fan base, but okay. A lot of events have opened up for me now that I've entered the ripe old age of high school, sir. I wanted to go to prom because I wanted to have fun with my friends and I wanted to experience something that I don't do too often. I didn't want to miss this opportunity because I will feel bad missing a once in a lifetime experience with friends who I will most likely never see again after who high school. Who writes this to that who my writes this to a YouTuber? Come on. I was supportive of my decision of going to prom, but my dad was not. Because of this it does, sound, it does sound like Phil writing, but I mean this come on. Who writes like this to a fucking YouTuber? Someone that needs a needs a supporting person in their life and they're looking for it in the wrong fucking place. My dad and I had a heated argument that was based on parental control. Whoa. He wanted me to listen to him and all the time because, because he Frank believed Frank. that if I listened to him, I would have no problems in life. Anyway. I'm yeah, who, who says this? Keep going. Keep going I disagreed yes. with his rationale because I felt like some of my dad's decisions robbed me of the beneficial opportunities that I could have ventured to, such as going to prom. <laughs> so as a result, I had a miserable and lonely time at school the day of prom since almost... Oh, yeah. Nothing to do with you about that. I'm sure about that. Oh, definitely. I'm sure. It was all your daddy's fault that you had no friends. Right, right. Almost every senior didn't go to school that day because they were all busy getting ready for the event. Yeah, My you're busy having that thing called fun, you know, hanging out with friends. You know, you might want to try it sometime. question is, what are your feelings on parental control? I remember you touched upon this a little bit in one of your Ask the King segments. For me, I say it's a little bit... Oh, I say it's a necessary evil because parental control is needed for disciplining your child, right. but at the same time, your child can be robbed of opportunities based on how you feel about his or her wishes and the situation yeah. evolves. My parents Thanks are saying I shouldn't do blow. They really robbed me of that opportunity. What's going on, parents? What's up with that, Phil? Can you help me with that? Reading and stay positive. What a question. All right. I've already said it this episode. I'll say it again. This yeah. is a very good policy to live your life by. Everything in moderation. Okay. <laughs> When you're growing up, your parents may seem overbearing. Your parents may seem know-it-all-ish. Oh, we know better than you. You should listen to everything that we have to say. Uh <laughs> parental side, Phil. Strap in, boys. We're getting ready for parental side, Phil. Um, One point. Which you have to speed, realize, and it's not every case. There are some parents who are just fucking sickos. Most of the time, parents are doing this because they want what's best for you. Oh, thank it's you. It's not because they're looking to hold you back because they don't want you to have a fun time because they're just oh. malicious dicks. There are parents like that, okay? There are. But I have oh, to believe really? somewhere How in my head know? a positive thought that most parents don't aren't just trying to thwart their kids from having a good life and having fun. Oh, okay. Thank More you. than likely, there's a reason why parents are being overprotective, okay? In my case, my parents were being overprotective. I'll tell you oh. why. Because they yeah. were having problems with their marriage. I know I've never really talked about this publicly before. I will right now. This is Thank real you. and from the heart. They were having problems with their marriage at the time when I was in high school. They may or may not have cheated on each other. I don't oh. know or care because it's not my fucking business, and I don't give a shit what they did, right? But Bam. what they decided to do, they decided to put me in the middle of it and make me the center of the issue. So, well, we hate each other's gods. Look what you're doing. You're going to tear up. Scanner Tomato, we're getting to the car accidents it's all it's all it all come together i promise i know we're not talking much about car accidents yet but it's all we're getting to this car story here in a second I family promise. apart what's going to happen to phil because of this and that and literally they made me the center of it when really i had nothing to fucking do with it it was those two so uh -huh. for, no you right. can't go out with your friends you got to stay home and save your money and do what we tell you and this or that and basically they made how is that putting you in the middle you tell me how is that putting you in the middle okay how is that putting your child in the middle Come on, man. I mean, more like an object than anything else. And their ongoing marital battle that they had when I was in high school, okay? They're, they're treating you like an object by not letting you shit they, not letting you do shit they think you shouldn't do. Okay, sounds good. And again, I know that I never talked about this before, so I'm being real with you guys, all right? Okay. And whatever that means. so for me, I understood why they were doing it. They kind of thought, well, gee, if this marriage goes south or whatever, at least we could, we could still take care of our son. We want to make sure our son doesn't end up in a position like this. We want to make sure our son doesn't make bad decisions. But so how is that putting you in the middle of this? That seems like a very thought, well thought out thought, right? I want to make sure that Phil has his normal life. So how is that putting you in the middle of this? I don't get that statement at all. But quite honestly, what ended up happening was that it was just discipline for the sake of discipline. No, you cannot go out with your friends tonight. Why not? Because I said so. Well, I don't understand. I did all my homework. Everything's done. I've gone out before and proven that I can go out, come back in a proper time and be <laughs> here for school tomorrow. No, can't go out. What I've proven I can go out and come back at a proper time. 
you know? I would be going, I would be working, saving up all my money from my job, my part-time job when I worked in the mall at fast food, doing salads and, and frozen yogurt and stuff. Oh, was, shout out to the mall job, the first job ever. The uh, healthy, healthy salads place that was not healthy. He t talks later about that. Save up for six months to go to a tournament, and they would yell at me, why are you going wasting your money? What do you mean wasting my money? It's my money. I can spend it how I want. No, how dare you? You're, you know, go ahead, but we don't approve of what you're doing, and you're wasting your life and your money. And it was like, so, wait, so well, hold on. He just said they let him buy it. What? They just let him do it. They, in the end, they let him do what he wanted to do, but they said they disapproved. So they let him use the money however he wanted, but they just said they don't agree with it. So that's fine. <laughs> what? You know, go ahead, but we don't approve of what you're doing, and you're wasting your life and your money. And it was like never good enough for them, right? They were always super over-disciplined to the point where finally I had enough. And at the end of junior year, I basically, that summer, between June— So his parents have done nothing wrong right now nothing they did they didn't let him waste his money they didn't let him stay out too late they when he bought when he went spent money on the tournament his parents were probably like hey you know what the tournament's whatever you know you might want to save your money for something else but they said they said i don't prove i don't like this but then they let him buy it anyway what <laughs> no i take that back it was actually senior year most of senior year okay, senior i kind of just told him i was going to do whatever i wanted okay Ooh. and it got to the point let me put it this way i don't know if we talked about this either let Why me put it this twice? way my parents did, trusted me enough to buy me a car. They did. They bought me a, a car. It wasn't I don't, baller alert? Parents bought a car. Was it brand new? No, I can't even remember. I know it was at Ford Escort. Was it brand new? I don't know. That shows how much he cared about it. Doesn't even know if the car was new or not. And they gave him a car. You know what people would love to have a car bought for them? I know I would. When I was in high school, I had to buy a car. Bought it myself. Proud of that car. The Saturn. <laughs> a, a car it wasn't. I don't. Was it brand new? No, I can't even remember. I know it was at Ford Escort. And I got into a car accident in it. It wasn't my fault, but it ended up being my fault because the guy who was at fault, who swerved in front of me and almost ran me off the road, took off. So there was no, I didn't get to see his license plate. No one got a witness. So they said, oh, you lost control of your car. I'm like, no, this guy almost hit me, but they wrote it off as it was my fault. The car got totaled. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's not how it works, by the way. The car drove off to so the police. Said, oh, yeah, that's your fault. Right, right. Right. Oh, took off. So there was no, I didn't get to see his license plate. No one got a witness. So they said, oh, you lost control of your car. I'm like, no, this guy almost hit me, but they wrote it off as it was my fault. The car got totaled. All right. Okay. The first, they just, they just skipped right over that. I did nothing wrong, but they just said, I, did, I swerved. So it was totaled. Was there no like marks on the road or anything? I'm sure they don't just say stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. Dropped inputs. Yeah. Dropped inputs. The thing my mom says to me in the hospital is not, are you okay? Uh, oh my God. What happened? No. Why did you disobey my wishes and drive on that highway? I told you not to. And at that point, I said, you know what? Fuck this. Because if you're going to make oh. life about you and not about me anymore, I don't care. And I literally told my parents after that, I will go out whenever I want. I don't care. What? 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 Or I don't care. Fuck this. Because if you're going to make life about you and not about me anymore. If you're going to make life about you, not me. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. And I literally told my parents after that, I will go out whenever I want. I don't give a shit. If you're going to kick me out of the house, kick me out of the goddamn house. I'll go live with my friends because I've had enough uh, of your bullshit. Who, who, who are they? <laughs> you're absolutely overly disciplined. You for no reason. My grades are great. You know, I'm not into drugs. I'm not into alcohol. I'm not doing any of these things that you would think that would be the problems that would be the reason why they want me to stay home. And I said, enough is enough. And for most of senior year and that, that one summer between uh, senior year and college, I wasn't even home. All right. So this is. Look how fast he could change the story. You know when you're making up stories, you can change stuff? He says, for all of senior year, and then the next line he changes it to, the summer of senior year. For the summer year between college and high school, where like pretty much everyone does whatever you want, you know? It's kind of like a fun summer. Listen to this. That one summer between, and I said enough is enough. Listen and for this. most of senior year, and that, that one summer between uh, senior year and okay, college, so he, I wasn't he, even Never home. mind, I was wrong. He said a continuation. So most of senior year and then. Okay, my bad, my bad. Oh. I wasn't. I'll do what I want. And basically taught them a lesson that I am not their bargaining chip to be used between their marital problems. To Again, he's given no examples of how he was used as a bargaining chip. Zero. But, okay. To be used between all their shit, right? And it straightened them out a little bit, especially when I went to college. It did straighten It straightened them out a little bit. It straightened them out a little bit. It straightened them out a little bit. I know the video went. Hang on. It straightened them out a little bit. Straightened them out a little bit, and they stopped doing that shit, okay? Woo! But the bottom line is, somewhere in there, okay, <laughs> somewhere in there, they did do that stuff because they cared about me. They wanted the <laughs> yeah. best. Yeah, good point, Dead School. He ran away from home at 18. <laughs>
<laughs> Whoa, this guy's a badass. This is like a drill rogue. I'm 18. I'm out of here, mommy. In there. They did do that stuff because they cared about me. They wanted the best for me. They maybe didn't want me to run off and get involved they in They wanted the best and, for and you. They were pregnant and doing yeah. all this stuff. They were afraid. They did it in the wrong way. Currently, like I said, everything in moderation. <laughs> I've gotten 125 likes on this stream. <laughs> okay, no, you can't go out every night of the week, but I'll let you go out one to two nights of the week if you can prove that you're responsible and you're going to be doing your homework and you're going to be there and you're going to have your responsibilities completed. It's the same thing when you get to the workforce later on after you graduate from school. If you can... So now he's explaining how everything they did was in good faith and they did everything correct. Okay, this 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 is amazing. Look at the nice balls there. Enjoy that. Go to work and be there on time and do your job sufficiently and then go home and, and hell, uh -huh. do whatever you want. Go out partying, have a drink, play video games, and I, however you let loose. As long as you're able to do that and then get back to your ass on your work the next day and fulfill your responsibilities, then do it, right? And that's right. what parents need to be doing. If the kid's succeeding, fine. If the kid's failing, no. Then you have the disciplinary actions that need to be pulled I'm back. Trained. So I don't know what the situation is here, Trinjetto, or Trinjetto, excuse me. So at, I, just sp I just spouted a lot of bullshit that really didn't say anything, but I don't know what your problem is. Anyways, next question. With what happened? with your prom i don't know anything about your academics i don't know about your friends maybe your parents disapprove of your friends who you wanted to hang out with at prom but it seems to me like your mom didn't, your mom thought it would be fine and your dad for whatever reason if you're what you're saying is true that he just thinks the prom was wrong and you should go that's ridiculous okay and ridiculous. i agree with your your i completely 100 percent agree with you that that's absolutely fucking ridiculous that your dad yep. would be like that if he's just for the sake that he thinks he knows better and he has no reason and that's the bottom line if parents would just learn to learn how to communicate with their children and explain to them why they feel that something is the right thing to do instead of just saying because i said so because they think that's the easier way then... no because when they're dealing with you they got to say that probably yeah the bottom line they got to do that with phil because you know he's you know what he's like endlessly endlessly you know what explain it again what like all right that's it phil you can't do it that's it i'm done you know dave was like that i'm done with this i'm not explaining anymore i'm done you know and that's what phil of course narcissist cannot handle that dude i, I mean a kid would probably understand you right right, right? what if right? Oh, i just heard that your kid that one of your friends is into drugs and i'm afraid that you know he's gonna try to do something tonight then maybe i would understand why they don't want me hanging around with that kid that night that's different that i just told you so and i know better than you and you can't say shit like that okay so I don't know the situation. Oh. I can tell you what. <laughs> what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Hang on. So, I don't know the situation. This is this is some Okay, here we go. Hit it with one of these. That's what I'm saying, Dave. Give one for Dave. Then we give one for Linda. That's Linda's side. Then we go back. We got the Dave. That was for you, Dave. This was for you, Linda. Got a problem? Dave, Linda, I straighten your asses out. What? It, that's, they were not straightened out yet. And then he straightens them out right here. He just straightened them out. <laughs> nice. I can tell you one thing, though. <laughs> if you didn't go to prom and you did not have a girlfriend, for example, who you were taking to prom or there's potential that you would become your girlfriend because you were taking... Why, did, why does he... Okay, we're going to be here all fucking day if I keep stopping this much. Why does he say girlfriend so strangely like it's some odd thing? If you have one of these uh, girlfriends, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, who has one of those, right? <laughs> a girlfriend, for example, thing, though. <laughs> if you didn't go to prom and you did not have a girlfriend, for example, who you were taking to prom. Or <laughs> That's so funny. I don't know why. If you didn't have one of those crazy things, you know, some people have girlfriends, like whatever, right? Am I right, guys? Like, you know, I mean, who has those, right? Come on. If you didn't go to prom and you did not have a girlfriend, for example, who you were taking to prom or there's potential that you would become your girlfriend because you were taking her to prom, you missed nothing. Oh. Zero. Okay? Prom is a different thing for everyone. So yeah, oh, by the way, spoiler, Phil didn't go, but he's going to tell us how much it sucks. Sound good? Let's go. How, do, how much does prom suck? People go just as groups of friends and they have a good time. Some people go with their, their significant other, like I just said, your girlfriend or potential girlfriend, and that's cool. Some people do the wrong thing. They drink, they do drugs, they fuck everything under the sun, and they oh, that's realize. That, right? That's what I want to go right there. <laughs> I want to go to that one. Some people do the wrong thing. They drink, they do drugs, they fuck everything under the sun, and they ruin their lives, right? There's going to be groups of everything, uh, every kind of person that go to prom. The bottom line is prom is incredibly expensive. It is... Uh... <laughs> Remember, he did not go to prom, guys, but okay. Uh, ner a nerve-wracking time because you're saying, oh, I spent all this money and I got to, you know, try to perform or be funny or have fun uh, or whatever. You got to perform. You got to perform. <laughs> I can't handle the perform. <laughs> you got to perform. <laughs> of everything, uh, every kind of person that go to prom. The bottom line is prom is incredibly expensive. <gasps> it is... Uh, 
ner a nerve-wracking time because you're saying, oh, I spent all this money and I got to, you know, try to perform or be funny or have fun or whatever. <laughs> My situation was actually... I got to perform, try to be funny and have fun. <laughs> yeah. Who has performance anxiety about prom? Wow. Wow. We might just go to prom. The plunge is changing to the prom stories. Prom. Worse than yours. My situation was this. Here's how funny this is, right? So oh, whenever he says it's gotta be funny, it's not. Let's hear we go. In high school, I had one girl who I was sweet on. I had a crush on her, hardcore crush. I was sweet on. Ooh, so too sweet. For like two years straight. After two years of her telling her she wasn't gonna go out with me, I said, no, no, she's not gonna go out with me. She's not. Fuck it. I don't care anymore. When I was junior. Two years. Two years. She wasn't gonna go out with me. I said, no, no, she's not gonna go out with me. She's not. Fuck it. I don't care anymore. You when know, I she got the restraining order, and I was like, all right, that's enough. I said, fuck it. I'm done. Police came to my house, then I was like, fuck it. Junior year, I had another girlfriend that lasted a few months, didn't work out. There was another girl who I Girlfriend? Okay, so that's, he did say girlfriend there. <laughs> when I was junior year, I had another girlfriend that lasted a few months, didn't work out. Few there was months. another girl who I went out with who was not from my high school, went out with her for a few months. She goes to a different school, guys. Shut up. She goes to a different school. That didn't really work out. My senior year, I didn't give a fuck about anything. I was like, I just want to get out of this school. This school is lame. I was one of those kids, I was in the clique that wasn't a clique. The, the mystery. <laughs> yeah, I know that clique. The click that was not a click. You know the people that don't have any friends at all? I was in that click. Mm hmm Right. Big group of kids that weren't jocks, weren't geeks, weren't any of those things, right? We were just... Weren't, weren't jocks, weren't geeks, weren't friends with anyone. It was maybe. lame. I was one of those kids. I was in the click that wasn't a click. The, the misfit group of kids that weren't ah. jocks, weren't geeks, weren't any right. of those things, right? We were just right. the kids who just fucking don't give a shit. We don't care about getting girlfriends in this stupid school. We don't care about getting good grades. We just want to get through senior year, get the fuck out of here and get on with our lives because we had enough of this <laughs> stupid drama queen bullshit that is high school. And it was funny. <laughs> yeah, he was a D-Generation X. <laughs> Because we became a group. It was like five or six of us who became a group like oh. that. And it, oh, I would love to see that group. We became a click. We created our <laughs> Yeah, we, we created our own group. We had our own small bus to go to school every day. We went to the same classroom. All the other kids went to a different room. And we went to the small bus. But it was fine. We were a click. We, were, we weren't geeks. We weren't nerds. We were just all, you know, group, you know? Our own click, basically. And so by the time prom was coming around, I didn't give a fuck. Dude, I, I'll admit, I thought for a while I might want to go. I uh, yeah, yeah, until you couldn't find someone to go with. <laughs> I thought for a while I might <laughs> Yeah, you get this. They gave us our own private bus, and they picked us up. We all went to a special part of the school, and we all got valedictorian, by the way. We were all super smart. It was incredible. I might want to go. I didn't even bother asking the girl who I had the crush on for two years. I said, fuck her. For two years, she blew me off. She said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to bother. Fuck her. Let her find someone else to go to prom with. And she did. Let her find someone else to go to prom with. <laughs> you know, I'm sure all of us have had people we wanted that we could not have, you know, at that time. But this is not how you explain the situation when you can't ask her out, you know, or whatever. And she says no to prom or whatever. You don't say, like, yeah, I'll, I'll at least let you find someone else, okay? I don't even need you, okay? So whatever. Uh, no. I don't need you anymore. Alright? Go find someone else. <laughs> you just lost your chance at me. Okay. She blew me off. She said, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna bother. Fuck her. Let her find someone else to go to prom with. And she did. Um... <laughs> and she did. <laughs> Get there was another girl who was kind of the nerdy girl in school. She was a... Uh, uh, an uh, a nerdy girl? She was otherwise... I thought she might be closer to in my league. Let's see how this goes. Asian girl, but she was cute. I thought she was cute, and I was friends. Oh, but she was cute? Oh, she was Asian girl, but not bad, you know? Uh, surprisingly fine. Uh, that's what he's saying right here. That's what I'm hearing. Girl in school. She was a, a, an Asian girl, but she was cute. I thought she was cute. I was <laughs> friendly with her. I never really hung out with her or anything. We had, you know, talked a few times. <laughs> I never really hung out with her. I never saw her before, but I knew she existed. So, uh, Asian, not bad, though. You know, not bad. You usually think bad, but not bad, surprisingly. Who was kind of the nerdy girl in school. She was uh, uh, an uh, Asian girl, but she was cute. I thought she was cute, and I was friendly with her. I never really hung out with her or anything, but we had, you know, talked a few times. Went to a I never hung out with her, but I played her in the game Street Fighter a lot. She goes by the name of Chun Li. You know, I never really talked with her, but I played with her in the game. It was really cool. Movies once or twice. We had a lot of stuff in common, some comic <laughs> interest in TV shows and stuff. And I asked her out, and she acted like I was punking her. You're not real. <laughs> oh, God. oh man, this can't be real. Come on, punk. <laughs> a few times, went to a movies once or twice. We had a lot of stuff in common, some common interests of TV shows and stuff. And I asked her out, and she acted like I was punking her. You're not really serious. You don't.
want to go to prom with me. I was like, yes, I do. No, you don't want to go to prom with me. Uh, you know, I don't believe you. You're punking me. This will be a joke, or you'll regret it afterwards. Or maybe you're trying to find the girl that's easy or whatever. And when she said that, I said, enough. I said, you know what? I don't need that. How much you that is not how that situation went. <laughs> that is not. Or maybe you're trying to find a girl that's easy or whatever. And when she said that, I said, enough. I said, you know what? Maybe you're trying to find a girl that's easy. Uh. I don't need your bullshit, your drama. I was trying to be nice. Maybe go to pro Listen to this. I don't need your bullshit, okay? I'm tired of girls. Fuck girls. You know what? Fuck girls. I'm done. They don't need me. That's incredible. I'm someone who I was friendly with. This is <laughs> amazing. I don't need this shit. I don't need your bullshit, your drama. I was trying to be nice. Maybe go to prom with someone who I was friendly with in school. Fuck you. Enough. You done. said you weren't friends with her. You said you never talked to her. Please. I don't care about prom anymore. So that was the end of my... I didn't care about prom anymore. I was like, done. It's a, It's literally like three weeks before prom. Not even. Maybe two weeks before Yeah, I know. Good point, Doom Asice. I was trying to be nice. Don't try to be nice. No girl wants that. Be nice. Hey, I'm trying to do a, you a, I'll do you a favor, babe. Want to go to prom with me? Yeah, right, right. Prom. A girl breaks oh. up with her boyfriend, okay? Ah, so maybe we get last-ditch effort style, Phil, here. Last chance, last, <laughs> last chance saloon here. All of a sudden, she has no one to go to prom with. Okay. The people who wanted to go to prom already had dates. <clears throat> but she had gotten wind that I had asked someone to prom and then finally said, fuck it, and I was the kind of... Yeah, everyone's laughing about that at lunch for like a week. Yeah, so she heard about that. Time to, <laughs> time to, this is my chance. A guy who didn't give a shit. She said, maybe him, you know. So she asked me, would you want to go to prom with me? I said, all right, well, let's think about it. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I was interested in going. It's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I'm not really, you know, I wasn't horny for the girl. I wasn't really even that friendly with the girl. Quite. I wasn't that horny for the girl. <laughs> honest. Earlier, a few years back, she had actually made fun of me. And now because I become part of this <laughs> clique, all of a sudden she was getting friendly with me. I don't really understand that. But <laughs> That doesn't make sense. She was making fun of me two years before, but because I was a part of this clique, the cool click. Remember, he said it wasn't cool click. Now she started talking to me. It sounds like she wanted to go to prom really badly. And, you know, some people say you can't go to prom by yourself. So you got to find somebody. And this that's what she did. And become part of this click. All of a sudden, she was getting friendly with me. I don't really understand that. Uh -huh, right, but, uh, right. She's like, all right. So there's this one. No, let, let me make up the story real quick. Hang on. Let me, get, let me get the lie straight in my head real quick. Hang on. Hang on a second. She's like, all right. So <laughs> there's this one other guy who I've also. <laughs> This is 100% making shit up. Look at that. Who does this kind of pause? He's trying to, like, get the story right in his head. Look at this. All right. So there's this one other guy <laughs> who I've also asked. You're both maybes, basically. So so she asked two guys. Very believable. Okay, keep going. If you can get the ticket or whatever, uh, you know, get the ticket. and, and buy, buy my ticket, too. Whoever buys my ticket, basically, I'll go with them. So it, it's, the, the, the balls are in your court. <laughs> if you get our tickets, fine, and then we can start working. I'll get a dress, you get a tux. If you get our tickets or whatever, and a, and a car ride or whatever, I said, okay, fine. So I thought about it for about a night. I said, I'll fuck it. Shoot the J. Let's do it. Go to the, I get, buy the ticket. Shoot the J? <laughs> what does that mean? Have you ever heard that? Shoot the J? You know what? I'll shoot the J. Shoot the J. I want to use that. I'll, I'll use that more now, but I don't know what the hell that means. I'll shoot the J. <laughs> you know what? I'll shoot the J. So I thought about it for about a night. I said, I'll fuck it. Shoot the J. Let's do it. Go to the, I buy the tickets, everything. Talk to my parents. My parents were like, we thought you didn't have a girlfriend. I don't. But this girl out of nowhere. Hey. <laughs> parents, are, parents couldn't believe it. <laughs> parents thought they were punked. <laughs> parents thought they were punked, too. It's an opportunity. Even if it were, doesn't work out, I don't even like her. Fuck it. At least I'm at prom, right? Okay. So we start doing reservations. We're going to get a tuxedo. We're pricing stuff out. Next day, I go to school. Oh, I already got, I'm going out with the other guy. What? I'm going with the other guy. Well, oh! You asked me, you said, God! Can you imagine that? <laughs> I don't know why that hello on the bottom right is popping up sometimes. It's an error. We get a tuxedo. We're pricing stuff out. <laughs> Next day I go to school. Oh, I already got. I'm going out with the other guy. Oh what? God! With the other guy. Well, you asked me. You said if I got the tickets, we would go. Yeah, he got tickets too, so I'm going with him. Oh! Uh, fuck you. Uh, seriously, I got so fucking pissed at her. Oh, uh, that's 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 rough, man. <laughs> that that is fucking rough. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> that's rough. That's very rough, man. And this is this is many years after he had the the uh, that list of ten you know incel points about women. Oh my god, if that that's what shooting the J is. Oh my god, failed as a backup plan.
oh man i was like what the fuck is your problem then it was hilarious because the other guy tried to confront me in the school gymnasium right oh here we go he tried to confront me like he's tough shit because he chose him over her i picked because he chose he oh did we get a little secret there he chose him was it maybe a male style person but no just kidding that was a misspeak <laughs> right he tried to confront me like he's tough shit because he chose him over her i picked i mean that's high school like that's an asshole thing to do but i mean that's high school <clears throat> let's see how phil handled this did he shoot the J? You're in the gymnasium, so maybe he shot the J here. Now maybe the J's coming out. I picked up a fucking chair and I say, if you take one more step, it's tough shit because oh, he chose no. him over her. I picked up a fucking chair and I say, if you take one more step, I'm going to brain you, you fucking stupid idiot. I don't care about prom. I'm pissed that she told me that we were going to go. I bought. I'm going to brain you. Oh, wow. I'm going to brain you. Tickets are wasting my money. I looked out. I went back. Luckily, the person. <laughs> I looked out. <laughs> who was in charge of prom was the, the dean of uh of, he used to be the head of the english department he was called the dean of discipline i know it's crazy i said listen can you give me can you please just throw me a, a hook here a, a, a favor here i spent a lot of money throw me a hook here okay i've got some fishing to do throw me a hook and i'll throw it in the water you know what i'm saying i'm gonna brain you so he threatened to brain somebody can you please just throw me a, a hook here, a, a, a favor here? I throw spent a lot hook. of money on these prom tickets. The girl's a fucking flake. I didn't want to go in the first place. I should have. Oh, yeah. That. I'm sure the dean of this one was like, yeah, yeah, that goes fucking flakes. Am I right? Cool. Better. And he actually gave me a refund, which he didn't do for anyone else. It was incredible. The guy was so nice. Like, yes, here, take your refund. So, so the dean of discipline gave him a refund. Right, right. That was my prom experience. I didn't go. And guess what? I don't regret it. I saved a shit ton. <laughs> guess what? I don't regret it. Totally sucked. I wouldn't have had any fun there. Right. Money. I saved a shit ton of regret. I might have gone with this girl who really wasn't in interested in going with me in the first place. She wasn't interested in either of you. She just still chose. You. She still chose the other backup. <laughs> she just wanted to go. So if you really didn't have like a date or whatever, there's no reason to even go to prom. Fuck it. It's a stupid social thing. Oh, you're going to adulthood. Whatever. It's bullshit. It's the same stupid. Oh, I'm going to adulthood. Oh. High school drama. You got to conform to what everyone says it is. At that point, I didn't. You got to conform to what everyone says it is. Okay. Give a fuck. I kind of got tempted into it and then backed out of it. So you didn't miss much. But in regards to your dad, I'm you didn't miss much. I have no idea, but you didn't miss much compared to my experience of not going. Sound good? Sound good. So you got to have some kind of a talk with this guy because if he thinks he's just doing stuff for the sake of he knows better, that's the worst. All right, we're done with this story. But that was a hell of a fucking story. That was a fuck hell of a fucking derail. New lore to me there coming out. Asian girl said, I thought she was getting punked. Then he got punked with the backup. Next mention of car accident. Um, remember, so, so far we've learned. I feel, okay, so so far we've learned that uh, the the back injury was not caused by a single incident, but also when he got to the hospital about the accident that was not his fault. He, the first thing his mom said was, "Uh, you know what's wrong with you? Why did you drive on that road? I told you not to drive on." Phil laid down the law. They learned a lesson. All right, we're fast forwarding. Thanksgiving of 2016, we get another. Oh, Batman. <clears throat> 150 likes attained. Thank you guys for liking the stream today. We're going to Thanksgiving of 2016. We get more lore about the car accident. Let's enjoy. Look at this Phil, Prospector Phil, thinking about all the watering holes he's found on this American pasture, ready to w <laughs> sow his wild oats right here. Here we go. Remember that I watch. They stream for eight straight hours. They never take a break. Like, yeah, that's great. Well, do they have a back, back injury? Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Big aisle. <laughs> Work. You know, I got to a car accident where I fell down. Nothing. There we go. But it used to be, I mean, it used to be constant. When I was in Connecticut, it used to be constant pain. No, hold on. I'm a bit too far. Here's the question. Come on. Don't do this. <laughs> The J. For about two months, I had physical therapy and injections yeah, into my back. Oh, wait. So, fuck, when I go back. And I've been fucked for life. Okay. But when I did, because if I didn't, and this thing had popped, this. Oh, yeah, here's the disc. Seriously okay. wrong. Okay. 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 Being nerve pain. Nerve. And we're playing. Come on. Right now. My back is. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> did them twice. There we go. Thanks to all of you, like a heartfelt thanks, especially now this time of year. It's heartfelt time to thanks, be thankful, everybody. Right? It's time to be Definitely. thankful for the support that I do receive, for the people that come out every single day to watch live streams or on-demand videos, for those who have made the past eight years of my life an awesome experience. I wouldn't be living in Washington. I wouldn't have any of the shit that I have right now if it wasn't for you guys and gals. Thank you very much for that. Thank you heartfelt. Very much.
All right, Heartfelt. let's All right. finish up the questions. Here we go. So the next question is from Richter Tryhard, and he asks the following. Richter Tryhard. Phil, I'm a new viewer, and I find your videos pretty hilarious. You mentioned that you have a back problem. My question okay. is, well, how did you injure your back? What's the origin story? I can't seem to find an answer on that anywhere. Well, it's funny. Funny you ask about this, Richard. All right, I need to have a it's funny counter, because then you know it's not funny. So here we go. It's not funny. Or, I said Richard. Oh, God, I screwed up. His name's Richter. I feel bad now. Sorry, Richter. I apologize wholeheartedly. Again. Um, uh... Good question, and the reason it's a good question is because I used to talk about my back a lot when my back injury was really bad. Since I moved to Washington State and adjusted my lifestyle, my back is so much better, all right? And that's Ooh, why I barely ever talk about Seattle any kind of air. issue with my back, because I really don't have that much of an issue with my back anymore. So allow me to explain. He doesn't really have that much of an issue with his back anymore, guys. This is 2016. All right. Um, I never had back issues at all in my life. And then all of a sudden, around 2006, um, so 10 years ago, I started to notice that my back was hurting me. Now, it was various kinds of pain. Sometimes it would be soreness. Sometimes it would be shooting pain. Um, it was various kinds of pain. <laughs> sometimes it would be emotional pain when the Asian women would turn me down in high school. That kind of stuff, you know. But it wasn't constant. Keep in mind, 10 years ago, I was much heavier. Right now, no. you know, I'm a little, I'm too, I would say probably I fluctuate between like 210 to 230 pounds right now. Remember he said 207, he was doing good. So he's bigger than that right now. But he's still doing great with his weight, guys. You got it? Not making fun of everyone's weight, but it's funny. He's it's just funny how he he has different describing terms for different weights. To I would say probably I fluctuate between like 210 to 230 pounds right now. Okay, okay. roughly on average, I'm usually around like 210, 215, but sometimes I fluctuate up and down depending, you know, if I'm on vacation or whatever. It happens. Depending on the gin I drank that week, you know how it goes. <laughs> but back then, oh, I mean, I was talking like I was at least 240, 250. If not, you know what I mean? I was pretty chubby. People have seen me, my early videos, when I first started on YouTube, I was like mm, ballooned up, okay? Oh, yeah, definitely. So back then, I was a heavier guy, and my back started to hurt me. Well, okay. definitively, when I found out this was a problem, was one day, it was the summertime, and I was actually playing uh, touch football with some friends of mine in a park. It was like a, a holiday a gathering. I believe it was someone's birthday, and they were having, like, grilling out dogs and burgers and everything, and we were playing touch football. <laughs> Burger. And we are playing. This is the thing. I used to do this stuff all the time. I used to be a more athletic person. I used to actually run around a lot and do a lot of this stuff. I used to lift weights when I was much younger. Much more What's to lift weights when I was much younger? More athletic person than I certainly I am now. And all of a sudden, after this, this, this session of flag football, I went home, and I laid down. I said, oh, my God. What happened? My back is really, really in pain. Like, sharp, shooting nerve oh, pain <laughs> that was resonating not only in my back, but all the way down my legs. Oh. I was like, what the hell? And it didn't go hell? away. I thought, oh, maybe it's because I was, you know, did this flag football. It didn't go away. It started to get worse. It started to nag at me. It got to the point at one point. My legs were getting numb. Now that point. is a huge negative sign that something's going on huge seriously wrong. Sign. Okay, not, so I ended not, up going to the doctor. Not for red flag. Doctor but negative originally sign. gives me X-ray. I don't see anything. It's like, well, doc, guess what? Obviously, the X-ray is not the right test for this particular problem because I am in excruciating pain all the time. So I think you maybe you should run some more tests. The doctor was actually just going to let it fucking go. Unbelievable. So the doctor. <laughs> There we go. At least he's not lying about this story. He did. He was a Karen to the doctor. He says, all right, I'm going to give you an MRI. So puts me to MRI. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Doc, guess what? I'm tired of this. I'm going to straighten your ass out. Okay? Fuck this. And he runs out of the doctor's office. I'm going to do. I'm to treat you just like I treat my parents. Run out of here. MRI <laughs> machine scans me, all that. I get called back to the doctor's office urgently two days later. Okay? He didn't say this before. Not saying it's not true, but he definitely didn't say this part before. He said it was on the phone, didn't he? But I don't know. Come back. Oh my God, your MRI shows that you have a severely herniated disc between your L4, L5 vertebrae. Shout out to L4, L5. Were to pop, number one, I could be crippled. Number two. If this thing were to pop, I could be crippled. I thought it was going to explode earlier. Two, right. I could lose uh, control of my bowels. I mean, it was to the point he said it was. <laughs> of course, he points that out. Bowel. So bad that, thank God, I could. I could lose control of my bowels. But when I did, because if I didn't and this thing had popped, this disc, that I could have been fucked for life. Okay. If it, if it popped, it would be like a 4th of July. Like a goddamn 4th of July. So, gee, Doc, good thing we went for the MRI instead of just passing on the fucking, uh, the x-ray and pretending like nothing was wrong, which is what he was going to do originally. So. Uh, so, I was right, proved right again, obviously. Mouth jeweler, doctor. Uh, I had some options back then. I was told, well, here's what you could do. You can okay, either what are the options? get surgery right away. Now, back then, the surgery would have been very intrusive. This is 10 years ago. The surgery would have been, they go into it, they, they cut physically out the disc. I believe they fused the spine in this particular Ooh, they, area or, or whatever. Or calcum, uh, and gold, fuse. It's incredible. 
Shout outs to T on the T pose. This is much different. Today they have laser surgery that's not intrusive Whoa. that could actually do the same operation and basically there's a lot less risk. It's a lot healthier. All right. Well, thank you for re upping your membership. I appreciate that. Says, when you do the surgery, it's basically 50 50. Redneck, 50 percent your life's way better. You're going to have a great life. 50 percent it doesn't even get better, could get worse. Dude, and you are they doing surgeries for 50 50? Like, I'm not, I have no clue about this shit. Luckily, I don't need that surgery myself yet. But holy fuck, man. 50-50? They're doing that surgery 50-50? yourself over. Fine. So I'm like, gee, this is a pretty tough decision. What's my other decision? He said, what my other option here is that I, I get physical therapy, I get drugs. Flipping my... a coin, boys. Get in the operating table. 50-50. We'll see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? Doesn't sound that cool, but all right. <laughs> back. All right. Different kinds of drugs. And I try to adjust my lifestyle to this back injury. All right. So what does that mean? It means... uh. No carrying of heavy things, especially okay. over longer distances. No more heavy, strenuous physical activity like that flag football, out. No more weightlifting, none of that kind of stuff. Anything I do have to do is to be very light and not strenuous on my back whatsoever. Um, <laughs> no more playing on arcades. No no more like driving long distances because that actually puts a strain on your back when you're driving constantly using pressure with your legs. Uh -huh. That puts a strain on your back. So what I do... Immediately, I had to stop doing the physical things I used to like to do. I, uh, I doing used things. to travel and drive around the country to play Street Fighter. Could do it anymore. No more shooting that was it. I used to give everyone's ride to go to Street Fighter tournaments. No Could more shooting Jays. Do it anymore. <laughs> so all that came to an end. Stop carrying heavy stuff. I, you know, I tried to basically adjust my lifestyle to be more careful, just in case you know something were to happen, I don't fall or whatever and hurt myself even any further. For about two months, I had physical therapy and injections into my back. Uh, the doctor mm -hmm. wanted me to take painkillers. I refused. The Why? Is because, right. Thank you for uh, re-upping your membership. I appreciate that. Why would you ref Schroeder's back bay, just like Schroeder's cat? Why would you refuse painkillers? Let's see what he's gonna say here. Like that's so dumb. Oh, big ups, black and white Elmer's glue. We always support Elmer's glue around here. Do not worry about the background of that ca that picture. Do not worry about it. Don't focus on that. It's just Elmer's glue. They had to take painkillers. I refused. The reason I refused is because uh, in my family there is a history of addiction. I have a cousin who is a drug addict. I oh, I have a history of addiction. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me get, let me, let me make up my own story here, as Phil did earlier. You, you have a history of addiction, so you choose not to take painkillers. However, however, daily drinking of gin is totally fine. Does that sound good to you, or how does that sound? <laughs> no painkillers, but alcohol is cool. Okay. Cool, cool. And also, uh, gambling on mobile games. Okay, cool. I have a uh, aunt who's an alcoholic, um, and there were other relatives of mine. That, that aunt is g taking blows to this day. God damn that aunt. That's why she came back as the aunt. Family, there is a history of addiction. I have a cousin who is a drug addict. I have a uh, aunt who's an alcoholic. Um, and there were other relatives of mine that have gotten addicted to some pretty bad stuff. And I was nervous, especially hearing, you know, I was a big wrestling fan. I was nervous after hearing stories of people like Kurt Angle, who is an amazing <laughs> athlete. Goes, oh, God, he's got to compare himself to Kurt Angle. Hang on. This pro wrestling hurts his back, starts going on painkillers. Now he's fucking drugged out on him all the time and everything. Ended up getting kicked out of WWE because every time they tested, the guy failed the drug test. Um, and I didn't want to be like that. I didn't want to be a guy who, in order to live my life, I have to pop a pill every morning. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> oh, what a hero. What a hero. So I refused. By the way. <laughs> used. And the doctor was like, well, okay, if you're sure. But, you know, initially it was not good. Initially, okay. uh, my back was pretty bad. And it got to the point where I was feeling shooting numbness and pain and everything. In fact, even my early years on YouTube, you can see I can't stand. <laughs> I still can't. To this day, I can't stand still for more than a couple seconds. I still have to move around because if I don't, it's, I feel very uncomfortable. I almost lose my balance if I just stand still. I have to keep moving I constantly. Um, for a while, it was like that. I couldn't even stand, like, have equilibrium. When I was on an escalator or something like that. I would feel nervous, and I couldn't. I almost have trouble standing on an escalator going up and down because of my back injury and the pain and everything that I would get out of oh, it. God. Um, and it sucked. Like a lot of people wonder, you know, when I do gameplay, why I take breaks. Some people are like, I don't understand, Phil. This other streamer that I watch again, comparing me to someone else, unfair comparison, right? This other streamer that I watch, they stream for. Un How is that unfair comparison? That's literally just a comparison. How is this unfair? You are a game streamer. How is this unfair? Just comparing. Eight straight hours. They never take a break. Like, yeah, that's great. Well, do they have a back injury? Because if I sit here... <laughs> to the operator household? Did they go to prom? Did they ever shoot the J? No. So shut the fuck up. Mouth jeweler. More than, say, half an hour at a time. Even now, doing Ask the King between the parts, I'm getting up and walking around. I feel oh incredibly God. uncomfortable. I get tenseness in my legs and I get pain and stuff. So, you This know. seems like a pretty fucking problem. I thought you just said it was no big problem. What the hell? He started this with saying it's not that bad. What the fuck? We started this whole talk with it's not that bad. Now we can't even, we can't find equilibrium on an escalator. Whoa, God. 
know that's the deal with my back injury it used to be a hell of a lot worse now in, in the meantime what happened is i lost a lot of weight like i said i used to be 240 250 now i'm down to say 210 220 so because of that a lot less previous video who's at 207 just just for the record on my body makes it a lot less better you know what i mean um, it makes it, it just, a lot less better it makes it a lot less better just so you know i mean just, just keep that in mind it keeps it a lot less better okay cool a lot less weight on my body makes it a lot less better. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, um, I know what you mean, that, exactly. Uh, I definitely know what you mean. Fact, I've adjusted my lifestyle. I now live oh. in, a, in, a, in a community here where I don't need to drive a lot. When I do drive, everything is within close distance. Everything, literally everything I could possibly need. Any electronics, food, you know, uh, any resources, fun tourism, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Every everything I need, electronics, food. <laughs> the, the, the basic needs of humans, electronics, food. What else do you need? <laughs> Food, you know, stints, everything, literally everything I could possibly need. Any <laughs> electronics, food, you know, uh, any resources, fun tourism. <laughs> electronics, food, and resources. <laughs> electronics. Oh, the three, it starts with electronics, food, and resources. <laughs> the essentials. <laughs> electronics, food, and resources. And then we get fun tourism. So that's like, I mean, what else do you need? The basic human needs, you know, as we all know, the basic human needs are electronics, food, resources, and fun tourism. I mean, is, is he wrong? <laughs> Find the lie. <laughs> Any food drive, everything is with I now live in, in, a, in, a, in a community here where I don't need to drive a lot. When I do okay. drive, everything is within close distance. Everything, okay. literally everything I could possibly need. Any electronics, food, you know. Uh, any resources, fun tourism, that kind of stuff. <laughs> everything I need is right here. I don't have to go drive 10, 15 fucking miles. I can go within a few miles. Everything is within radius of fun, me. Fun tourism is within a few miles. That's pretty fun. I mean, fun tourism. <laughs> I don't carry a lot of heavy stuff. I have a garage now, so when I go grocery shopping, we pull in. It's a quick walk, grab the bags, go right to the kitchen, put them down. It's not like I used to, when I used to live in Connecticut. It was I had to go to this, this parking lot that was way far away from my unit. A lot of times there was ice and shit on the ground. It was a nightmare. So all you... <laughs> it was a nightmare holding oh god oh my god this is incredible right to the kitchen put them down it's not like i used to, when i used to live in connecticut it was i had to go to this this parking lot that was way far away from my unit a lot of times it was ice. a parking lot way far away from my unit ice and shit on the ground it was a nightmare so all the adjustments <laughs> i made to my life have made it better so my back basically doesn't get strained and the bottom line is since i moved i got it that time <laughs> here to washington no lie i think maybe twice i've had an issue a major issue with my back i remember earlier this year All I, right. it. I think we're way past the car surgery we're gonna keep going we, we heard that was a small mention of the back injury again let's go we're gonna go forward in time again we're gonna go to august 24th 2017 uh this is entitled death of full games living alone and being famous that's the name of this video let's here we go <laughs> I think, still think the battle question that Vera asked, have you ever had a near-death experience? If you're comfortable sharing what happened, no. Uh, have you ever had a near-death experience? Here we go, that's the question. <laughs> well, the closest I ever came to dying was my car accident in high school, because that was very close. I mean, a do the door impacted to right here, and the only thing that saved my life was the airbag, because the airbag didn't deploy and basically push my face this direction because it burned the whole side of my face the airbag whoa but if it didn't the door, harvey dent <laughs> door would have impacted my head and i'd be dead um uh, <laughs> okay so good thing they have airbags um but that's the closest i ever came you know to dying but i never had like a near death experience or anything like that um where people say oh i was out of body or you know what i mean like there's all these different things that people say that's a fucking leap what <laughs> i was out of body <laughs> Or anything like that, um, where people say, oh, I was saying, but I never had like a near death experience or anything like that, um, where people say, oh, I was out of body or, you know what I mean? Like there's all these different things that people say, my life flashed before my eyes. No, that didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Um, That's, that was just a little bit. So he said, this is a near death. I, I want to explain his car accident was a near death experience. Okay. Near death experience that the car accident now is described as a near death experience. Nothing else to note there, but it was a near-death experience. We're going to fast forward again to 2018. We get another talk of the car accidents. Um, let's see. Let's DJ see. Rudo says, soon I'm going to buy a nice classic. Shout-outs to DJ Rudo. Classic BMW 530D, first car I buy myself. Let's bring out... Do you still have that BMW, G DJ Rudo? That's the real question. I'm going to buy a nice classic BMW 530D, first car I buy myself. Let's bring out all the wishes for crash-free trips. I always wish that everyone would have crash-free trips. You know, car accidents are horrible. 
I've been in quite a few. Car accidents are horrible. I've been in quite a few. Quite a few. Let's keep listening. Everyone would have crash feet shifts. You know, car accidents are horrible. I've been in quite a few. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. a couple that I caused and a couple that I did not cause. And A uh, couple that I caused and a couple that I didn't cause. So this is all new. This is all new out of nowhere. So I thought it was two, but now we've 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 caused two ourselves, and we've and we and there's two we didn't cause. So now we're up to like at least four in terms of how he's saying it. But okay, let's keep going. Uh, sometimes I was the driver. Sometimes I was the passenger. And they're not a pretty sight. They're, they could be very very life threatening and very bad times. So they could be yeah. very very life threatening and very very bad times. Yeah. I would never wish anyone get into a car accident. That's awful. Great commentary here. Uh, let's pick up some horse duty. No Call comment. Of duty, I'm watching horse duties. I'm watching chat very carefully here. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I want to hear if he says anything more. I don't know. I got. We got more to go through, of course. Well, I think he's done. Potential collapse detected. Okay, he's done. Let's go to the next one. That was it. So just so you know, he was a passenger in some. He was a driver in some. But definitely more than two, it sounds like there. Let's fast forward now to Death Dark Souls Remastered. What a, what a, what a run this is. What a gameplay, a game string this is. Silver Knight Gauntlets and Leggings. Here we go. More talk about the Timbo car accident. Timbo Slice. Asked, do I ever get eye floaters? Um, well, I have a couple of them in my left eye. And I think all they are are broken protein strands. Because when I was in high school... <laughs> Oh, God, Timbo. The question was, do you have any eye floaters, which is a very normal question. I get asked that all the time, as, as you guys do, too, I'm sure. But they're protein spans? What is this? <laughs> he says it very strange. That, that's slurred. I mean, this is slurred. A couple of them in my left eye, and I think all they are are broken protein strands. Protein <laughs> I think they're just protein strands. So, you know, as you do. When you get, uh, sometimes you get protein strands in your, when you're shooting the J, that can happen with the protein strands. I have a couple of them in my left eye, and I think all they are are broken protein strands. Because when I was in high school, I had a, a car accident, and my face got smashed by my airbag. And ever since then, I've had them. I only really see them at night. They don't really bother me at any other time. <laughs> I see my protein strands at night. <laughs> oh, hi. All right, that was it from this one. But the protein strands, uh, so they only come out at night. They mostly only come out at night, so they're nocturnal protein strands. And uh, that's all because of the car accident, okay? So the car accident caused these protein strands. The nocturnal protein strands. Now, that's a fucking card I should make. That is niche. Nocturnal protein strands. <laughs> Very close proximity with the brack brackets, but let's move on. 2019, more talk of the car accident. <laughs> Actually had Golden Colts, who did a cheer overnight, 70 bits. Big ups to overnight bits. Cheers. Thank you very much, Golden Colts, for that overnight cheer. That's appreciated. We start off today with Electrum Guy. What's up, Electrum Guy? We subscribed to the channel for four months. Thank you very Whoa. much, Electrum Guy. He says, Phil, I just got into a really bad car accident. I'm in severe pain. Have you ever been in a bad car accident? I'd love some advice. First of all, I have. I was Whoa. in one really bad car accident in high school. Uh, now he's been in one really bad car accident. I'm not going to rewind it, but you heard him earlier, right? But now we're, we're back to one. Only the one. First of all, I have. I was in okay. one really bad car accident in high school. Yep. Uh, my car was totaled. I almost died. Now what I mean by Almost died. That is, was I like severely injured to the point where I was in a hospital recovering for weeks? No. But I did... <laughs> Okay, I had I almost died. It was a near death experience. Do I do I mean that I almost died? No. What I do mean is whatever I'm about to say right now. Okay. Severely injured to the point where I was in a hospital recovering for weeks. No, but I did almost die. The door actually impacted to the point where it almost hit my face, and if it did, that would have been the end for me. Um, How do, who says that? How do you know that? I mean, so <laughs> who talks like that? I was driving one time and like the car almost got in the car accident. But then if I would have gotten a car accident, I would have been dead, dude. So like one time a meteor crashed on the earth. And if that was like fell right on me, I would have been dead. So like, I mean, near death, right? Totally. Makes sense. <laughs> what? Who talks like this? And in fact, my car, when I got out of it, 
The best way I can describe it. When I got out of it. So he's literally walking away from the car that he was in the car accident that way he almost died. Okay. It was just pretty crazy that I survived this fucking thing. Okay. The best way I can describe it. My ball. Imagine a, a, a ball. My ball? A, a piece of paper. <laughs> oh, he does start with my ball, I think, right? The best way I can describe it. My ball. Imagine a, a, a <laughs> ball. A, a piece of paper. A nice clean sheet of paper. All right. You know, a 11 by 8 normal sheet of paper uh -huh. that you use for like school or maybe you would type something on it or print yeah. something on your printer. Okay. Yeah. So, we, so you, you started with the ball. Can we keep going back to the ball? So now I want you to take that nice pristine piece of paper. I want you to put your hand on the top and bottom of it. What all the right? fuck are we doing and here? Then I want you to, as quickly as possible, what the crumble fuck? that piece of paper into a ball and shove it up your ass. What the fuck was that? I don't know why that Project Seven was so short. By the way, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, I know why. I, I so hold on. The, the, we, we have a hold on. Can we start again, please? I'm sorry. I really want to get this the proper ball story. I want to get this ball story. I'm gonna do it with him. What he says, okay? Imagine a a, a ball, a, a piece of paper, a nice clean sheet of paper. Okay, right. we have you a know, ball, a, but now it's a piece of paper. Normal sheet of paper that you would use for like school, or maybe you would type something on it or print something on your printer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now I want you to take that nice pristine piece of paper. I want you to put your hand on the top and bottom of it. Uh -huh. All right. And, and then, then shove it up their ass. Is he going to the rock? Is he going to the rock? Suck. <laughs> What I want you to, as quickly as possible, crumble that piece of paper into a ball. Okay, now we have a ball. We started with the ball, but then we went to the piece of paper. Let's see that what That is what here. my car looked like. And it was it was crazy because people were driving by on the highway with their jaws dropped like, oh my fucking God. How His car now was in the shape of a ball. Yet he walked away from the car. Remember this. How many people died in this thing? No one. Miraculously, I survived. It was pretty much a miracle. When people were seeing this, they're like, oh my fucking God. Um, <laughs> you know, that's pretty insane that, you know, no one was seriously injured in this in this accident. Um, basically, what happened was uh, I lost control of the car because someone was speeding behind me. Okay, so now we're getting more stories now. This is more stories. Remember, we heard, we've heard a few different stories of this. It's not his fault. That's all we know. But now let's hear how this, this, this car accident was caused. Remember, it's not his fault. But let's hear how it goes. Uh, I lost control of the car because someone was speeding behind me. What's up, Roger? And they were about, like, no lie, they were going to rear-end me. Oh, okay. So I had to... <laughs> oh, yeah. You would say that, wouldn't you? Right, right. Swerve out of the way. Okay. Because right. this guy was just not paying any attention. And when I swerved out of the way, I overcompensated and basically went ding, and I bounced off the barrier. And <laughs> Ding. <laughs> All right, so let's, get, let's recap. Someone was behind him. They were going to rear-end him, so he swerved out of the way of the person behind him. Okay, so swerve. Okay, car coming behind you. You think they're going to get you, so you swerve out of the way, then overcompensate, and then you get the ding. Okay, so just a little ding. I mean, ding doesn't sound like a... It's not exactly like you brain somebody when you ding, right? But hold, hold on, let's 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 swerved listen. out of the way, I overcompensated and basically not paying any attention and when i had to swerve out of the way because this guy was just not paying any attention now we know he wasn't paying any attention okay and when i swerved out of the way i overcompensated and basically went ding and i bounced off the barrier so how do you how do you swerve so okay let, let's go through this together you have a car and the car's going to hit you from behind so you swerve which and then you overcompensate the uh, to get back in the lane is what he's saying this is very hard to follow and you know being this was a very narrow highway there was nowhere to really get oh you know those narrow highways regain control of your car there's no place to <laughs> there's no place to regain control so of my car. car bounced back and forth across the, the highway for about i'd say three or four times until finally it crashed into a concrete wall <laughs> i went back and forth three or four times what huh I got you the tractor. Here we go. I'd say three or four times until finally it crashed into a concrete wall. <laughs> Not good. Not good. So it was pretty bad. Um, the cop said if I had known who it was, like if I could have obviously gotten the license plate number of the person who forced me to correct. Forced me to correct. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, I'm sorry. I really got to hear this again. Crashed into a concrete wall. The highway for about... 
you get regain control of your the barrier okay hold and on. you know being this last time i'm not here i want to hear the full story of the car accident here so hold on a second it's a very narrow it. highway there was nowhere to really get regain control of your car so my car bounced back and forth across the, the highway for about i'd say three or four times it, <laughs> what went three or four times here so my car bounced back and forth across the, the highway for about all right I'd thank say you for re-upping your membership times? i appreciate that the, it's bouncing like a bouncy ball three or four times through the whole hallway highway what? What are we talking about here? This is GTA. Yeah. This is GTA. Back and forth? Three or four times? And then when does the crumpling of the paper happen? Three or four times until finally it crashed into a concrete wall. Oh, the concrete wall. Not good. Okay. So it was pretty bad. Uh this does sound like there was one person driving and maybe they fell asleep or something and they lost control and then you wake up, you're like, holy shit. And that can make you overcorrect, you know? Holy shit. What, what's going on um, here? The cop said if I had known who it was, like if I could have obviously gotten the license plate number of the person who forced me to correct my vehicle, they would have looked into it and tried to find who it was. Of course, No, I they wouldn't. There's, that's, there is no way that happened. <laughs> They've made you correct. That would never happen. This person made me swerve. I don't think that's a thing. I'm not saying I'm some fucking expert, but you tell me, chat. Would they say, yes, this person made me swerve, so therefore, they didn't touch my car, though, sir, but they did make me swerve. Is that a thing? I wasn't looking at the fucking license plate. I was trying to control the car. Um, yeah, well, you're bouncing around three or four times. <laughs> so it ended up being my fault. Isn't that delightful? So, yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> you goddamn right it was. Yeah, who? what officer's hearing that? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yes. They were very close to me. They were definitely going to hit me, sir. 100%. They were going to hit me. They were definitely going to hit me. So that's why I, I rammed into the wall four times, three or four times, as I stated, three or four times in my original statement. Uh-huh. Right, right, right. Uh, And I almost died. But the good news is, even though I looked terrible, what had happened was the airbag had had deployed and it saved my life don't get me wrong the airbag saved my life shout out to the airbag so i'm incredibly grateful for that but <laughs> it burnt the whole left hand side of my face whoa so not only was the whole face black and blue but it was all bloody and nasty burnt from this airbag and i it was like the kaching like the kaching sandwich it was too burnt <laughs> still have a few minor scars on the left hand side of my face from this 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 airbag deployment um and also Minor scars. So my leg was fucked up. Like, it was all banged up. It wasn't hurt, broken, but it was, like, severely bruised, and, and you know, my arm was messed up. So... I, uh, yeah, literally just naming body parts and saying stuff is wrong. Like, you know, like, oh, my arm was fucked up. I think my leg was fucked up. Oh, my tailbone, that had a bruising. Oh, then my left wrist, oh, that had scratching. And then my right forearm, that had a little bit of pus. Uh, My shin, that has some gout crystallization. That's from... Unrelated incident. Uh, my back thigh muscle, that had some eczema. But that's, again, that's inconsequential. I'm sorry about this, officer. But yes, it was definitely not my fault. Thank you. I, got, I actually went to school the next day. Looking like <laughs> shit. Went to school the next day? All right. The car was in a paper ball. That's how we started. That's how we started. The car was in a paper ball. He's in English class first period. Sound good? And he almost died. And it's, yeah, they'll let you go to school with a burnt face. Thank you, True MG. Burnt, half, half your face burnt? Go to school. <laughs> That's definitely a, a real thing that definitely happened. Shit, <laughs> complete shit, but I still went to school. Um. Yeah, great, th great point, big guy. That's a fr pretty fucking short hospital stay, isn't it? Good, good shout. Man, how close was this to prom? That's my next question. Hope we figure that out. But anyway... Uh, that was the one major accident I was ever in, okay? That was the one major accident I was ever in. That was the one major accident I was ever in. I'll say it one more time. That was the one major accident I was ever in. So we went from multiple, both as the passenger and driver, and now we're at one. What else will we learn as we continue on here? Now, Electrum Guy, sadly, I don't think I can really help you here um with any advice because you're asking for advice on a car accident like i don't know what to tell you um in my case i wasn't i was i in pain yes 
Was I in severe debilitating pain with broken bones and shit? No. <laughs> I was just banged the fuck up really bad, and I looked terrible. But it looked, it actually looked worse than it felt. Like, people were like, oh my god, I feel so bad for you. I was like, oh, but I didn't really feel that bad. So. <laughs> I didn't really feel that bad. What I would say, your best advice, listen to whatever your doctor told you. Did your doctor okay. tell you to... to, to... <laughs> a lot of people said, oh, yeah, I feel bad. I didn't really feel that bad, to be honest. I almost died, though. Oh. So, what I would say, your best advice, listen to whatever your doctor told you. Did your doctor right. tell you to, to, to relax and lay off? If you guys are you enjoying know, the, the stream, <laughs> please give it a like. So far, 175 likes and climbing. That's crazy. Thank you, guys. That's crazy. Thank you, guys. Just told you, just do what they say. You know, they probably know what they're talking about. Um, right, I certainly right. wouldn't know any better than them, and I'm not going to be stupid and try to give you advice and talk out of my butt about it, okay? Thank you. Drinking, drinking, drinking. Why is this the first time we're hearing about this at Kill Bill? It's not. I've talked about this many times over the years. you got to remember, Kill Bill, I've been streaming for, well, excuse me, I've been a content creator for 11 years. Curator. Curator. Say it right, motherfucker. I've been streaming since 2013. Whoa. Um... More than likely, I've probably talked about this three or four times. More, more, we've heard All about right? seven of them but, so far, sir. And, I, and whenever people ask about it, I talk about it. But the thing is... My story changes often. In 11 years, you know, it doesn't mean I'm talking about it every day, so probably not a lot of people have heard the story at this point. You know, a lot of people who watch me now haven't, haven't didn't watch me in the long term, so you wouldn't know about it. But a lot of people listening right now probably have already known this story. So, okay. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. There's your answer. Anyway, there you go. All right. Now we're going to fast forward again. Far from done today, my friends. Got to finish before two, though. Not that. This one. Two, we're going to go to... 2019, November 7th, 2019, the same year, we get more stories about the car accident. Will the story stay the same? Will it not? Hang on to your hats. Look at this lighting, by what the way. was the scariest what... moment of my life? The entire, my scariest moment of my entire life. Hmm. Can't think of anything? I thought you almost died. I would say <laughs> probably the scariest moment of my life was Whoa. my, you know, the car accidents wow. that I've been in. Because when I was younger... Car accidents I've been in. Now we're back to plural. When I was young in high school, I got to that car accident and I thought I was going to die. And then later on in the 2000s, I was driving home from a tournament in a snowstorm. New story coming now. Here we go, boys. Second car accident coming in hot in 2019. Here we go. Second car accident story now. And I got to the point where there was no control over the car at all. I couldn't brake. I couldn't steer. It was just completely sliding through ice and snow. And I went right off the road. Probably those are the two times. So I was like, you know, I'm fucked. What are you going to do? Nothing I can do. You're in snow. <laughs> you're fucked. If you get into a bad car accident, you know, that's it. Whatever happens, happens. So that's it. That's un unfortunately that's all he talks about it. But um, this is a second car accident now that uh, the snow. Th this let's hear let's hear the story one more time for historical purposes. But that that that's it. I guess just take your take your hands off the let Jesus take the wheel. Steer. It was just completely. And I got to the point where there was no control over the car at all. I couldn't brake. I couldn't steer. It was just completely sliding through ice and snow. Uh -huh. and I went right off the road. Probably those are the two times. So like you know I'm fucked. What are you gonna do? Nothing I can do. You're in snow, you're fucked. <laughs> you get into a bad car accident, you know. That's it, whatever happens, happens. Right, I think that's it. But now we went from one, one car accident to multiple car accidents to now we're hearing about a snow car accident. First time mention of this. Wait, what's that? Okay, I think that's it for now. Let's keep going on here. We got much more to get through. 2019, the same year. This is a very high... Oh, this, this is January of 2020. Um, <clears throat> here we go. This is a question with a 100-bit question. Uh, Phil, off topic, but after your car accident, how did you beat your pain pills addiction? I read that you did... I read that you did through spiritual healing. This is from a, a Junior Mint 007. Easy. <laughs> Great question here. <laughs> Uh, Junior Mint did a hundred bit chase and after a car accident, how did you beat your pain pill addiction? I read you did spiritual healing. I took nothing. I just toughed it out. I didn't have any pain pills at all. <sighs> You're a real piece of work, you know that? I can't believe you thought that a sick- Didn't take pain pills at all. But that, that he doesn't get into it any more than that, I don't think. You sure. thought of that saying instead of me. Sorry, I couldn't help it. 
Seriously, it had to be him? Why did you need to- Shut up. Okay. Let's talk about any more here? I'm not sure. It's not Krillin. Well, yeah. That's it. Not watching this. That was it. Let's keep going. No pain pills. Almost dead. I toughed it out. Remember, didn't want to get addicted. The history of addiction. We're going to 2020. PW dubs to me dollar thirty said Phil Wolves. Well, have you ever been in the back of an ambulance? Ambulance. Yes. After my car accident at high school, they had to uh, rush me to the hospital. Uh, luckily, I didn't have much wrong with me, but uh, <laughs> it was very lucky that I didn't because I was pretty fucked up. Okay, hold on. So let's just analyze this real quick. There was nothing wrong with me, but I was pretty fucked up. Well, luckily, I didn't have much car accident at high school. They had to uh, rush me to the hospital. Well, luckily, I didn't have much wrong with me, but uh, it was very lucky that I didn't because I was pretty fucked up. That doesn't make any sense. So I, luckily, there was not much wrong with me. Luckily, but I was pretty fucked up. Hmm. Okay. 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 Sound Greta good? Thunberg took me a dollar to fill this time you ate bugs and stopped streaming to save the environment. Uh, go fuck yourself, Greta. <laughs> get fucked, Greta. All right, let's keep moving. We're going now to 2020 again. Boom. Crapcock Judy says, have you ever been in a car accident? How bad was it? Yeah, I've been in two. Now we've been in two car accidents. Do we get any more story here? That's what we're here for on the plunge. Car accidents? Um, the first one I was in was when I was in high school. It was insanely bad. The car was totaled, and I probably would have died if I weren't lucky, and I was very, very lucky. because the Probably would have died if the car accident, if, <laughs> if I wasn't lucky, so he was lucky. Totaled, and I probably would have died if I weren't lucky, and I was very, very oh, lucky. Very because lucky. the door, I keep telling everyone this story, the door impacted to about here, and if it weren't for the airbag pushing me back, the door probably would have went right into my head and killed me. Um, He's love this impact. The thing. other accident was I was driving on a, not a highway, but an expressway, two lanes, and then it started snowing, a crazy snowstorm. And it got so... <laughs> oh, snow lore! Hold on your hats! Two lanes, and then it started snowing, a crazy snowstorm. Okay. And it got so, so snowy and icy, you couldn't see anything. I hit black ice, and I went right off the road into the woods and almost hit a tree, but luckily didn't because there was so much snow, it stopped my, my impact. So I got. Uh, listen a second. Hold on. Let's listen here. Let's. We're all logical people here. It started snowing while on the road, and there was already enough snow to stop him from hitting a tree. Come on, man. You can't be saying stuff like this. It's just so what? <laughs> there was so much snow. It stopped it. This is unbelievable. I got lucky tree, but luckily didn't because there was so much snow. It stopped my my impact. So I got lucky there too. <clears throat> there was okay. so much snow. Now one thing. I it started snowing. You couldn't see anything, and then there was so much snow. I want to check before fuck? we go to this this main story mission. Okay. All right, that's it for that one. We're gonna keep moving on positively. He does oddly talk about the way more in the modern times than he did in past times. He talks about the car accident, but here we go. Mature adult Jason, what was your first car? And did you drive a manual? The first car I ever drove was my parents 1991 or 92 Ford Taurus. The first car that was supposedly, that was like my mind was a Ford Escort when I was in high school. Sadly, uh, didn't mention his parents gave that one to the Ford Escort. Shout outs to the Ford Escort that his parents gave him that he couldn't remember if it was new or not because yeah, he really, he really appreciated that present, right? That's what car accident totaled it like an idiot. Not I, listen. And listen to this. Yeah, this is a good one. I totaled it like an idiot. Implying, implying it's his fault, right? Listen. High school. Sadly, got into a car accident, totaled it like an idiot. Not, I mean, not, not really like an idiot because it wasn't my fault. But ah, there he goes. Whatever. He fixed it. <laughs> neither here nor there now. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it's neither here nor there, so just, just forget about it. This is how, this is how the story's changed with him, right? So... At first, not my fault. Not my fault at all. Get the fuck out of here. And then time passed. Why are you still talking about that? Whatever, it doesn't matter. And then the future, it's not, then it, then it changes to the truth comes out, right? Oh, yeah, it was my fault. Like, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> Totaled it like an idiot. No, I mean, truth not, comes not, out right then, and let's hear, let's hear him back that up. Not really like an idiot because it wasn't my fault, but... Oh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Neither here nor there now. It was a long time ago. 
Look how much fun he looks like he's having too, by the way. Just a little side note. Like, he looks like he's literally in hell. Vest streak, 184 streams. $100, 184 streams in a row. And he is in hell. That's the life. That's the life. Great white. No, what's the hammerhead? Yeah. A hammerhead. Like I said, it's too bad the fish guy isn't here tonight. I'd be making so much money. But this is pretty <laughs> crazy. This is the Isle of Sharks. <laughs> it's funny to hear these out of context. <laughs> Out of context, Animal Crossing. Well, Slice Chase is so great news. After trying for four months, I got a chance to buy a Switch. They'll be here in a week. Excited to get this game in Paper Mario. Cool. Okay. Admittedly, cool. Oh, man, I didn't see it. Admittedly, this has been the year of the Switch. I played a ridiculous amount of stuff. Okay, anyways, my... we're not listening to the year of the Switch. Next, we're going to go to 2020, October 23rd. Uh, just 10 days ago, three years ago. Let's hear more. This is dark and spooky Halloween style. Tov Glock to me four dollars twenty cents is because it's, it's it's spooktober or spooky October. Um, what was one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my whole life? Some of the scariest things I've ever seen. Uh, I almost died in a car accident. I saw someone get stabbed right in front of me and blood squirting everywhere. Now this is new lore to me. The stabbing comes out. <laughs> uh, I almost died in a car accident. I saw someone get stabbed right in front of me and blood squirting everywhere. I guess this would probably be the two most fucked up things I've ever seen. Who got stabbed? Blood squirting. Like, it's not... Are you talking about a movie? <laughs> I think he talks about it a little bit more here. Must have, there's too many fucking clips. There I has to be a reason why you want this to raise up. There has uh, to be. Maybe that's it. But he almost died in a car accident again. Only one car accident he almost died in. And also he saw blood squirting out. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. Now we're going to 2021. The villain to me ten dollars is what's up? What's the origin of your back pain? Was it playing super turbo for long hours or lifting heavy weights? <laughs> no, and in reality, I don't know what really caused it. Um, you know, tons of different theories. When I was young, I got into a car accident. Huh? 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 What? I thought you said it was. I thought you said it was uh, a gradual thing. Hope he doesn't blame it on the car accident now. That would be lying. When I was young, I got into a car accident. Uh-huh. And since then, I always I always noticed that every once in a while I would have back pain. I mean, could that have been the original thing that caused irritation to my back and started the whole thing and compounded it? I don't know. That is complete. You heard this, guys. This is why we do these. This is why I do these like this. That is an utter 1,000% change of story that we've heard it. What happened to flag football, right? What happened to it was not caused by the car accident and happened all before the car accident. The flag football was where he noticed it, right? Now it's blaming it on the, the car accident itself. 100%, it could be. Sorry, he didn't blame it on it. It could be because of that, right? It is tough to keep up with your lies when you tell that many. But let's hear that one more time because this is the ultimate retcon of the back injury story. And in the, in the end, who the fuck cares, right? You got a back pain, whatever. But just the lying, right? It's, it, you shouldn't lie. And when you do lie, we have a show for that now. I always, I always noticed that every once in a while I would have back pain. I mean, could that have been the original? Young, okay. I got into a car accident. Car accident? And since then, I always, I always noticed that every once in a while I would have back pain. Okay. I mean, could that have been the original thing that caused irritation to my back and started the whole thing and compounded it? I don't know. Um, I, I can tell you the day when I realized I had it. Uh, here we go. <laughs> was I went to play uh, football with my friends. My uh... so now we get now we get flag football. Okay, so now we're getting back to the, the flag football story is coming out, but you know. He said it wasn't about the car accident before, but now let's see what he's saying. People who normally I would play like Street Fighter and stuff with, but they had a get together at a local park. Um, and they were playing uh, touch. I got a uh, okay. By the way, uh, quick, quick, quick check here. I won't remember to do it if I don't do it now. I'm gonna check the SRKs for any mention of flag football because that would be pretty funny. But I'll search it as I play football. You know, or was it flag? I think it was flag football. I think someone had brought flags and stuff and everything. And we had doesn't know if it's touch football or flag football now. Cookout, and we were playing football and everything. 
and I had a ton of fun, and I went home, and when I got home, I was in excruciating pain, and I don't know what happened. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, this has never happened to me before. And after then, my back was never the same. That was like the, t the definitive time. Now, by the way, did I get tackled? No, it wasn't tackle football. <laughs> so it wasn't like I was, oh God, I really hurt myself or anything. It was just like running around, catching a ball and grabbing a flag off of someone or whatever. It, that's all it was. So <clears throat> I don't know how I hurt myself so badly doing it. <clears throat> I can't imagine that it was from that one game, you know? You know? I would think that it was from over time my back was getting worse and worse and then when i was playing that game somehow i irritated it really bad okay so he's he's he did retcon his own retcon here so just credit to him now this is not a complete complete retcon he's now he started with a lie because he wasn't sure and now he's backing up on that lie so here we go i i, I definitely think he can't keep his lies straight but he did kind of back into that now to the what he's been saying all the time he got there in the end but he started with a lie Badly, you know by the way for the first time i can actually go underwater here First time ever I can do this. I got a cube. Sweet. <clears throat> this will unlock a permanent upgrade. All right, so anyone talking to this, we're Seeker. All right, so the first time I was ever able to go under the water. That's uh, really when, though. But okay. I Next, we're going to go to 2021 again. That case where people forget you were in a, a bad car accident, too. Yeah, but that was in high school, you know? That was a very long time ago, and I don't feel that that really... Uh, maybe that was the beginning of some back stress, but that wasn't what caused my back problem. That was way before then. Okay, so there we go. You heard to hear it. That, so, hold up. That's, that's interesting, though, right? Th these back-to-back -back is funny because he starts this one with... Hold on, let me hear it. When I was young, I got into a car accident. Let me hear this one again real and quick. Since just then... I always, I always noticed that every once in a while I would have back pain. So since the car accident, he did have back pain. And then here... A bad car accident, too? Yeah, but that was in high school, you know? That was a very long time ago, and I don't feel that that really... Uh, maybe that was the beginning of some back stress, but that wasn't what caused my back problem. That was way so before that. Now he's not, he doesn't think so. <clears throat> and there is, real quick... There is May, June, July, all the four Arnold's months in wrong. between those two clips. Get a four A battleground. All right, so that's that. There's that. We're getting to the end here. Before it flew at me again. Oh crap. <laughs> uh, Matthew just tipped another five dollars. He says the worst life-threatening uh, injury I ever received in my life was a skull f fracture with a concussion and a skull scalp fracture. laceration. I had to get staples. Oh god, that sounds terrible. I'm really sorry to hear that. I've been lucky for most of my life. <laughs> Let me never tell you had what's a broken about me. bone. Never had anything serious like that. Yeah, if you don't do anything, you really can't break anything, you know? Um, <laughs> Funny you know, how that works. I had a works. car accident where I nearly died. The car door impacted to about here. <laughs> and I was very lucky my head didn't go that way. And the, the airbag deployed. And it burned the whole left-hand side of my face. But I think what it did is it knocked my head away from the impacted door. <laughs> so I actually survived because of that. Oh, Great. But that was not a serious injury or anything. It was close to being a serious injury. So I was very lucky. Very lucky. But very I'm very lucky. sorry to hear about your, your I last see a railway man. bridge up ahead. Anyways, back to my problems. All right, there we go. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> Who's he go hard to me? $1.50 He says, why don't you ever give details about the car accident? I've given details a million times. That's for sure. There's it's really not, not much there. to say. I was driving home from school on not really a highway, but they call it like an expressway. It's a two-lane narrow road, but everyone drives. So now it's not a highway, it's an expressway. I mean, uh, that, that, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything wrong with that. Of course you can't remember details like that. But it's funny how in the beginning when he starts telling this story, it, it's, it just changes. Now it's not a highway at all. Now we got an expressway. And, and we, we, you know, so... Not really a highway, but they call it like an expressway. Okay, let's see how It's a two-lane narrow road, but everyone drives like, like very fast on it. I think the speed limit is like 55. I had merged onto the road. I was trying to lane change left to the left lane. Oh, now we're getting way more lore. Okay. Okay, okay. So before it was an asshole flying behind us that was definitely going to hit us. We swerved. We swerved back and forth. We're bouncing like a we're bouncing like a bouncy ball. And then we shoot the J. Now let's see what happens now in 2022. So less than a year ago. More than, a little bit more than a year I ago. I had merged onto the road. I was trying to lane change left to the left lane. And as I was doing that, someone was driving literally like 100 miles per hour or more. I had to veer out of the way because he was about to run. Ah, here we go. Okay, so Phil was trying to merge onto the left lane, but that guy was going so fast that Phil was like, oh, shit, car's coming. Let me swerve, and then let me 
then let me then then he overcorrected here. So that's definitely that's a hundred percent his fault. <laughs> you know, that's, that, that guy's going too fast, I know, but he's merged into someone, right? <laughs> Rear end me, whoever it was. So I veered out of the way and overcorrected and bounced off the right, uh, the right barrier, and the car lost control and smashed into like an underpass, and that was the end of it. I smashed into an underpass. Oh, that's the concrete wall. Okay, there we go. Barrier and the car lost control and smashed into like an underpass, and that was the end of it. That's that's my car accident story. There's not much to it. Of course, I reported that to the officer, and he's like, "Well, the problem is you have no evidence that someone was doing that and made you veer out of the way, so you're responsible." I was like, "Oh, that's great how the law works, huh?" What do you want? <laughs> so I thought, well, well, it bounced three or four times earlier. Now we bounced. So he's trying to lane change. The truth does come out now. Uh, the the <laughs> He was trying to lane change. There was a car going. We don't know how fast, right? It might have been going. He might have been going the, the natural whatever speed, whatever the speed uh, limit was. He could have been going that far, that, that way. Bill tried to go left. Oh, shit. Someone's there. Re, you know, overcorrect into the wall and then into the, the whatever the concrete wall he talked about. So there's the, there is definitely the proof that it was 100% his fault. <laughs> what, is he, what is the officer supposed to do? Oh, okay, yeah. So it's funny that you say that because I've talked about that story many, many times over the years. I yes, don't know you why you think I've never talked about it. Too. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's give one more chance to talk Your about panel? it. I mean, PS5 right now has two major use. Boring. Next. 2022. I have a different kind of weapon like that. What was my first car after getting my driver's license? The first car I ever drove was my parents' 1991 maroon ford taurus shout outs to ford taurus then shout after outs. that they got me a car a ford escort that was blue but i got into a bad car accident and wrecked it and then after that they decided i would not have a car anymore so i didn't have a car good I choice the ford taurus again great choice parents great choice for the longest time until i bought myself a 2002 pontiac grand dam black and i drove that for time until i bought myself that's a very robust black coming up a 2002 Pontiac Grand Dam, black, and I drove that. <laughs> you can see the cheeks, black. Time until I bought myself a 2002 Pontiac Grand Dam. Here comes black. He's loading it up. Oh my God! Look, you can see the puff. Oh my God! Look at that! Look at the black. The black. Ex you talk about exploding disc. That's some exploding lips. <laughs> he's loading it up oh my god that's intense that's an ex explosive black <laughs> all right black that's first again for the longest time until i bought myself a 2002 pontiac grand dam black and i drove <laughs> that for like a decade till it broke Mateo did another super chat says, you remind me of a good actor, Ricky Gervais. Everyone says that I look like him. Personally, uh -oh. I'm taller than him and not as wide, but I think facial-wise, because we have the same facial hair and the same kind of hair like this. I Get fucked, dude. I don't look like J Ricky Gervais. Get the fuck out of here. Look at me. I'm not as wide as him. That's why people say it. Uh, Saul said, did a super chat says, do you have a Sam's Club or Costco up near you? Costco, I loved and closed and went out of business. Oh, for some reason, by the way, right, we're not hearing Costco lore. Still more to go. Let's go. We got uh, four more videos to go. Then we'll get to our normal style pre-show style show. But let's go. Will against the actor, knowing Matthew would have to live with the results. Oh, of God. Echo from the fucking neck phones. Rob Gaffigan. His actions for the rest of his life. Yeah. The actor says to this day, the crash and the lives lost still haunt him so this guy in the movie got in a car accident for some reason i don't fucking care but let's hear how phil phil's gonna of course make it about him so here we go no i can i can fucking imagine like oh yeah of course <clears throat> so when, if this is the case uh -huh. right he he wasn't intoxicated he wasn't maybe you know like what happened what could cause you to have that yeah, kind of yeah, a situation yeah. uh -huh. i <laughs> amazing, that, amazing that this what? is the first thing we're doing for those who don't know, I got into a really serious car accident when I was in high school. Okay. Whoa. Oh, God. And no, I wasn't driving a fucking sports car or anything. But what happened to me was... What happened? I was driving my car. I just had just gotten onto not a highway, but they called it like an expressway, a, a parkway. And it's only a two-lane road, but people drive on this thing really, really fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So I had gotten onto the onto the the road. Now I'm not intoxicated. 
I'm not <laughs> drugs or anything. I'm paying attention. In fact, if anything, I was basically overly paying attention. <laughs> I... Officer, I was overly paying attention. <laughs> Officer, uh, my only sin was overly paying attention. Oh, I understand. I understand, sir. Thank you for that. I was overly paying attention. Your Honor, I was overly paying attention. <laughs> Your Honor, I, uh, was being overly sexual with that woman. <laughs> I was being overly, I was being over. I'm paying attention. In fact, if anything, I was basically overly paying attention. <laughs> I got on and as I was. <laughs> Officer, I saw too much. Officer, I cared too much. Officer, some might say I was too careful. <laughs> I was not intoxicated with alcohol. I was intoxicated with attention, sir. <laughs> I was getting on to the highway. I decided I was going to lane chain left to get into the faster lane. Yeah. Because I was going to be driving for a while, several exits before I got off. And what happened? So I go to lane change left. I signal and everything. As I'm going to the left lane, this guy is flying. I mean, he had to be going, no exaggeration, like 100 miles an hour. Uh -huh. He's coming up so fast on me. I, he's, go, he's definitely going to rear end me. So I said, oh, shit. And oh, I now, we get, we, now we get some acting out. This is something we have not got yet. It's to get hype. Swerved back into the right lane. I had been lane changing, and I swerved back into the right lane okay. to get out of his way. He flies by me. Like, so fucking fast, narrowly missing me. But I overcompensate. And when I overcompensate... But similar to my over... <laughs> similar to me, me being overly safe, I overcompensated. I'm really an overachiever, actually. If you look over here, you can see how... <laughs> I hit the right barrier, which sends my car... I live over here. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. And when I overcompensate, I have been a content creator for over 14 years. <laughs> missing me, but I overcompensate. Oh, okay. And when I overcompensate, I hit the right barrier, which sends my car bouncing like a pinball from oh, one pin side of, the, of this expressway to the other. The problem is this is not a big road. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's only a two lane road. So it goes bing, 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 Three. and then eventually flies off into there's an overpass of a bridge. I'll tell you one thing. To bang that many times back and forth, you got to be fucking out of your mind, right? I'm not saying like alcohol. I'm not saying like intoxicated, but I mean like not just holding your not, not holding the wheel, right? I mean, who goes bang, 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 bang? I mean, that's pretty intense, right? I've never been in a car accident like that fast moving like that. So maybe I don't know, but. Who's bang, 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 bang? Like, it seems like you bang once, and then you're like, all right, that's the end of it. I'll now break and stop steering that way? <laughs> yeah, now that's a fucking drive impact. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Unearned, full screen. Like, who does that, right? Like, it seems like you push break, and then you, okay, let's say you overcompensate. The first overcompensation, all right, I get it. I mean, I'm sure that guy was probably going the speed limit when he tried to go to the next lane and feels like, holy fuck, whoa, what the whoop? And then all the way right into the barrier. And then he goes like, ping, 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 damn. <laughs> God. And I fly into the side of this overpass and my car gets completely fucking totaled. I walked away with... <laughs> Minor in... I walked away... Totally fine, but seriously, I almost died. You trust me on that. A completely burnt side of my face because my airbag had deployed and it burnt the entire left side of my face. So I had all this fucked up flesh and all fucked up flesh. Reminder, he went to school the next day. He went to school the next day with the fucked up flesh. So like all this cuts and, and, and stuff on my face. So I look hideous, but thank God the airbag went off. Because if it hadn't, I would have died. My door had impacted God, to impacted. where my head was. So if the airbag hadn't stopped my forward movement, my head would have went into the door and I would have died. Okay? My, oh, my let's not be over dramatic or anything. I would have died. Okay? So if my parents had sex on a different night, I would have been dead. Okay? So it's pretty cool, right? By the way, please tip, okay? Emails carry the carry the mail here. Come on. My head would have went into the door and I would have died. Okay. My my passenger, who was my friend at the time, 
completely unscathed. <laughs> the only thing that happened to him. My pat his <gasps> Reminder, the car was a paper ball. Now there's a passenger we never heard about, and he's fine. What? His glasses flew off his eyeball at time. Oh, I hope, is it Rambo? I, it would've, he would have told us it was Rambo, so it's not Rambo. But there's a passenger now. Did that happen to him? His glasses flew off his eyeball or his, his head and flew into the. His glasses flew off his damn eyeball. Holy shit! Escape. The only thing that happened to him, his glasses flew off his eyeball or his head and flew into the woods. So he lost his glasses. Now there's. They flew into the woods? I, they probably fell out of the window, you know? He's just trying to make it more as, as fucking dramatic as possible. But outside of that, he literally never had any, an issue at all. Okay? But, dude, narrowly narrowly died like like barely survived okay <laughs> i narrowly narrowly died oh, oh sorry i mean didn't die it's tough for me to remember my story but i narrowly died pixels my friend pixels narrowly narrowly died like like barely survived okay <laughs> so in this case with matthew broder i wonder what happened like <laughs> yeah what if he has 18 different versions, too? What would cause him to veer from... He's perfectly in his lane, right? Stay in your lane, what Matthew What would cause him to veer directly into oncoming traffic and hit someone head-on like that, right? I don't like, know. Maybe someone, was spe maybe someone was speeding behind him. It, it, logically, it doesn't sound like it would be something that would happen to a normal person. You say, oh, he was drunk. He wasn't paying attention. He was fucking around. <clears throat> he was on his phone. He was driving on highways. His parents told him not to drive on, you know. But I've been in that situation, and it happened to me. And it wasn't It happened to me. Fuck you. Because <laughs> I was fucking around. It wasn't because I was being an asshole. Someone... It was because I didn't check my blind spot, actually. Which is probably the truth of the story, but okay. And it wasn't because I was fucking around. It wasn't because I was being an asshole. Someone was going to rear-end me, and I wanted to get out of their way. Was there something that he wanted to avoid, or did he think he saw uh -huh. something uh -huh, right. that he wanted to avoid? Now, of course, what we have to ask here is... How can I end this story that I've started? I don't know the ending of it, but I've already started this story. So how can I end this? Let's see. Real question here is... What's the real question, finally? He says he forgot the whole day, right? I mean, let's be honest here. Doesn't that sound a little convenient? He forgot the whole day, right? Like, really? Uh -huh. The entire day? <clears throat> I don't know about that. <clears throat> I could definitely see, like, it was traumatic, and his mind blocked it out, or he Blocked. got bonked in the head so hard he had a concussion, but he completely forgot the entirety of the day. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, but he was doing rollback. Maybe <laughs> he, this is a case of really bad distracted driving, and it's just unfortunate that it turned out the way it did. Uh, um, thanks for this. this uh, but it sounds to me like they just couldn't prove anything. They couldn't prove that he did anything wrong. He wasn't drunk. He enough. wasn't high, right? So I guess yeah, they hit him with a fine. But you know what else are you gonna do? It sucks, though. It sucks. Whatever. What sucks is, okay, just stop. If you don't know what you're saying. Just there's stop. not people who are dead, and it's not like he intended uh -huh. for it. It's not like you know. It's just a horrible accident, oh, yep. and now he's got to live with that for the rest of his life. You know, that's awful. Awful. Yep. Not, not Similar all... to that guy that you almost brained with the chair. He also has to live with that forever. Just for him, but obviously the family too. When you when something happens like that and it's unexplained, right? Right. That's the worst. Quark says. I live God. a few miles away from where the crash happened. There's no markings on that road. So he crossed over inadvertently. So what you're saying is that yes, I do a lot of things inadvertently. Road has no divider line. Oh God, are we done with this? I want to skip. I'm done. I, it's a, there might be gold dust here, but I'm like fighting through this. Story. Different sides of the road. Uh, well, that would be fucking dangerous as shit. Uh, right? Like, don't well, you want to yeah. have a divider to tell you to stay on your side? Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> huh. Oh, huh, funny. Good story. Thanks for the tip. Anyway, wow. Anyway, first story, and already we, we've had a lot to say about it. Uh, you had a lot to say about it. All right. Still not done yet. 11 months ago, and it's time for some fishing. I miss the fishing. How about you? Dietrich did a super test. How many traffic violations have I gotten? In tr truth, not many at all. I think... So when I was a kid, first of all, I almost got a violation, but a cop let me out of a ticket because it was my first. It would have been my first. Um, 
Oh God, so Phil talked his way out of a ticket. We'd love to hear that. Um, <clears throat> my first real ticket was the car accident I got into in high school where the cop had to give someone a ticket for doing- that, that's, not, that's not how it works. We have to give someone a ticket here. So who's it gonna be? Who wants it? <laughs> I got into in high school where the cop had to give someone a ticket for doing something wrong because there was a car accident. And yep. I explained to them what really happened that someone had been yes. speeding up on my left hand side, like literally speeding like like maybe a hundred miles per hour, and I had to veer out of their way uh -huh. to save my own ass, but I overcompensated and made me that, veer off the road. But if it wasn't for that guy who almost hit me, rear ended me, I would have never had to move. Uh -huh. And he's like, Well, sadly, there's no record of that guy. He got away. <laughs> Let's check the tape. And he's like, it's not that I don't believe you, but I have to give you a ticket because you're, you know, the accident happened and there's no other evidence of anything. So that was <laughs> Yeah. So you definitely did something wrong, sir. <laughs> so we're going to have to give you a ticket. So he's making it seem like the cop was like, well, someone's got to take a ticket. So I guess I'll give it to you. Well, wouldn't you? My luck. It was the first ticket I ever got. Um... And yeah, so, no yeah why would you say what the ticket is exactly? So that was the right? first ticket I ever got. What did he say um, exactly? Oh, shit, my bad. And then there's no other evidence of anything. So that was the first ticket I ever got. Um, uh -huh. I'm trying to think years later, I got a ticket for... For what? Uh, speeding on the highway, driving to a Street Fighter tournament, which was complete bullshit because the cop did not have a radar gun. <laughs> Highway driving to a Street Fighter tournament, which was complete bullshit because the cop did not have a radar gun. Yet he claimed that he was counting the ticks on the ground, and I was like, "There's no way you fucking did that. All you were doing was looking at my license plate." <laughs> Phil knows what he was looking at. Uh, cop, you know, you weren't looking at the ticks on the floor, and it, definitely they can do that. That's definitely a thing. I don't know how it works, but I know like there's like some ways to do that. But if <laughs> you weren't doing that, you were looking at my license plate. I was overly safe driving, actually. You can give me a ticket for being overly safe, but I will not stand for this ticket for speeding, sir. Not on my watch, sir. What do you take me for? Some peasant? Some beggar? You know who this is? I'm a 14-year content curator, sir. Now, please, off with you. And you noticed that I was from out of town, and this is what cops do. They, they target people from out of town because uh, they realize they're from out of town, like from another state. There's no way you're going to contest that ticket and come back to the state for your hearing, so you don't have to pay it. So they literally will give bullshit tickets out sometimes yes. to hit their quotas. So I know I wasn't speeding. The cop claimed I was. But I know I wasn't speeding. <laughs> I know I wasn't speeding. The cop claimed I was. What the hell was I going to do? Argue? So I ended up paying the ticket. Um, outside of that... When I first moved here eight years ago, um, okay. I ended up, oddly enough, I ended up getting two tickets right here on my street corner, all right? On this street corner over here, Ooh, a new there ticket is lore. Hi. an automated camera that's supposed to catch if you blow the light. Now, I have not once ever blown that light, but what happens is you- Except, <laughs> Except for those times I did, but here. You blow the light. Now, I have not once ever blown that light. Okay. But what happens is you slow down at the light, you stop, and then you can do a right on red. It's legal here, right on red. Okay. okay. But what the fucking camera does, which is complete bullshit, again, <laughs> it looks to see- He's going to talk his way out of an automatic camera? <laughs> Come on. If you're from out of state, and if you are from out of state, it takes a picture of your car sitting at the corner going through a right on red, and then it tries to claim that you blew the light. This cannot be true. This cannot be true. Please, someone tell me if this is at all possible. They just give tickets to out-of-state people for no reason because they can? What? Tries to claim that you blew the light. And I'm like, how is this picture evidence that I blew the light? All you see is your own car over the stopping line, that's it. It's like, you, you could, that could have been this when I was turning right on red. What? How you have evidence that that was me blowing the light? Because I never the, blew the ca Oh my God, this is what this is the stupidest thing he said today. Like, they don't understand how to build cameras to, to check what you're doing? That's the whole point of it. Yeah, they just do randomly throws, yeah, the Cannon Brothers coded the cameras, yeah. They just th they threw up a webcam there and said, yep, you, were, you didn't run through the line. What? Turning right on red. 
how do you have evidence that that was me blowing the light? Because I never blew a light. I've never blown a light in my life, right? Oh, yeah. I never. <laughs> okay. Probably, probably when I was young, in the middle of the night when I was driving around at like one in the morning and everyone was at home and I was coming. I've definitely heard of that story that he told before, like uh, cops like out of state because they know that you won't go to the court date. I've heard of that before. I'm not saying that's the case here, but I have heard of that. I still think they don't just randomly get people, though. They fucking make sure you're, even if you're going 10 miles over the speed limit, they'll be like, all right, well, you're speeding, you're out of town, I'll get you. You're still, in the end, you still broke the law, whether it was as little as it was. You still were. However, however, traffic lights and turning lights, it, they don't just randomly get people. You know what I'm saying? Like, oops, I'll just, this person seems good. I'll get it. I'll get this dude. He's out of state anyway. That's incredible. In the end, you did do it. You know, a camera doesn't fucking lie. Coming over an arcade, maybe I would blow a light, right? Morning, oh, and everyone was at home. When I was young, in the middle of the night, when I was driving around at like one in the morning, and everyone was at home, and I was coming over an arcade, maybe I would blow a light, right? I've never blown a traffic light in my last 20 years of my life. So, <laughs> oh, he hasn't blown a traffic light except for those times he did, but that was a long time ago. So don't worry about that. So, when I first moved, yeah, he did say our site. At like one in the morning. Let me hear right? this again. He said weird about arcade. In the middle we of the night, this. when I was driving around at like one in the morning, and everyone was at home, and I was coming home from an arcade, maybe I would blow a light. Arcade, arcade. Right? I've never blown a traffic light in my last twenty years of my life. Never in my life. Last twenty years, actually. Yes. So, mm -hmm. when I first moved here, I still had my Connecticut plates on my car, and I was waiting for the the Washington plates to come. They were going to transfer them over, and I was going to change the plates and everything, but I had to wait for the car to be officially have transferred and be registered here. So for like two weeks when I had my car, it was still Connecticut uh -huh. registered and had Connecticut plates. So twice, I got two tickets in the same fucking corner. They tried to say I was I was running the light, and twice I said, no, I did not. You're full of it. Who, I, who'd you say this to? The piece of paper? The envelope? Who are you talking to right now? They tried to say I was, I was running the light, and twice I said, no, I did not. You're full of it. And then the funniest part was out of out of when those two tickets happened. Okay. Yes. Let's see. I this. changed my plates to Washington State plates. I didn't change my driving behaviors. <laughs> yeah, what? of course, of course. <laughs> but never got another ticket. <laughs> yeah. So isn't it those cameras are fucking high tech. They see if they see out of <laughs> out of state license plate, they will laser focus in on that. And then if you change it, hey, you're cool. Go on, sir. Don't need funny. to change. <laughs> they know what, that if you live here. Right. If you live this in this state amazing. and you get a bullshit ticket, you're likely going to take it to court. You're going to dispute it and you're going to get it thrown out so you don't have to pay it. But if you're from out uh -huh. of state, that's when they send you the ticket because they figure you're never going to dispute it. Right. So uh -huh. they're basically trying to get free money. It's bullshit. It's, I, this is so if you lived in the state, though, you can contest it, right? Okay. So. You know what it sounds like to me? You know what? You know what the, that camera said to Phil Burnell? It's right the fuck here. You chose to broke the law. <laughs> Live with the consequences. Get fucked. It's <laughs> two times in my life where I know for a fact I wasn't doing anything wrong and I was written tickets. And it's like, what am I going to do? Go to a court hearing and fucking fight this? For like, if you didn't do it, please fight it. A hundred dollars. You know, it's stupid. <clears throat> anyway, chain pick a roll. Oh, that's a good point, Flair for the goal. I thought he did get rid of that car before he moved. You're right. A two-pound nine-ouncer. A very nice one, right? That's a nice looking... No, he did get his car delivered, though, right? He did get his car delivered or something like that. All right, two more videos, and we're out of here. What a, an odyssey we've been on so far. Now we're getting to only eight months ago. More talk of the car accident. Our new safe house, and then we bank and we make some money. On a scale of one to ten, how... Yeah, the BMW shipped across the US. I rate Thank my you. own driving skills in real life is 672. Probably like a negative 17 or 18. Okay, that's his own driving skills. How will you rate that? How would I rate my own driving skills in real life is 672. Probably like a negative 17 or 18. No, I'm a, I'm a very slow, safe driver. I don't take risks. Uh, I'm in no hurry to go. Where These days, I'm in no hurry to go anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just a, a normal guy driving on the road, and I try to do everything right. <laughs> <laughs> While everyone else around me is just some crazy idiot paying no attention to what they're doing. Sometimes I wonder if they know they're in a car. Uh, exactly, yep. <laughs> so. No, nothing crazy out of me in real life driving. Nothing crazy out of me. You know,
in real life driving, even though he's had multiple accidents, right? Remember, he's had multiple accidents before. Now it's nothing crazy. He got a me in real life Almost driving. died, but nothing crazy, you know? You know, I haven't been in a car accident. Shit. I haven't been in a car accident since I was a teenager. Yeah, it's true. Not even like a fender bender or nothing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Here we go. Any other thing? Nothing crazy. Yeah, he drives once a week, literally. Okay. <laughs> Here's our new safe house. Here we go. All right, I think we're done. Last mention here. Last mention. One month ago. One month. Hey, yeah. Thank you, Sidon. What about the snow accident? Yeah, the snow, the magical snow that appears. It can cradle your car. <laughs> Next question. Let's suppose someone came up to you and asked, would you like chocolate or vanilla ice cream? And you pick chocolate. Let's examine that decision. Here are the reasons why you picked it. Number one, you like chocolate more than vanilla. Number two, past experience. Oh, I left this in because this question is so incredible. Like, not incredible in a good way either. Examine that decision. Here are the reasons why you picked it. Number one, you like uh... chocolate more than vanilla. Number two, past experiences with chocolate which is the same thing. Number three, texture of chocolate, which probably could be the same thing. Number four, advertisements of chocolate, which again, could be very directly related. Number five, a craving for chocolate, which again would be a result of the top five. And number six, many more. Literally every reason he just said is the same reason, by the way. Okay, if you examine this list, it's not reasons you chose or you control that influence and determine you to pick chocolate. This would be true for all decisions that you make. Well, okay. So you're saying because I ate something that was chocolate, I ate something that vanilla, I was like, oh, I prefer the chocolate to the vanilla. That that wasn't a choice. It's a I preference. left this in because it's funny. That's why. Okay. No well, you're that. right. I didn't make my taste buds. I didn't design them. I'm not sure anyone who does. Does anyone actively actually make those kind of... I didn't design, I didn't design my taste buds. Guys, I didn't design my taste buds. I don't know what that means even, but okay. let's hear it again. Well, you're right. I didn't make my taste buds. I didn't design them. I'm not sure anyone who does. Does anyone actively actually make those kind of choices in life? Or uh -huh. is it just something that you have and then you choose things based on enjoyment level? Okay. <laughs> How can you say you have free will if you were determined to pick chocolate? Because I chose to eat the chocolate after the fact because I liked it. <laughs> I had a choice between chocolate and vanilla. Uh -huh. Personally, I like the flavor of chocolate more, so I say I will now choose the chocolate over the vanilla. We had a choice between the two. I will pick the one with- This is not a serious question, but he took it very seriously. <laughs> my free will that I like the flavor of more. <laughs> you guys really make this too easy, really. <laughs> oh yeah, you handled that no very free will, easily. Have really been trying to like prove it for months and they have not gotten anywhere with me because they just, they just don't know how to phrase an argument, basically. Uh -huh. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Let's continue. What was the scariest experience of your life? The scariest experience of my entire life. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Hmm. It's a tough question. It's a very tough question. Um... You know, because there were certain things that happened that made me very afraid, mm -hmm. uh, health-wise, money-wise, mm -hmm. in my life. Like, there's there different levels of fear, right, that would create a scare. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, a health scare, where you might think that something's going wrong, horribly wrong with your body that you can't control. I've been through that, and it's scary as shit, because you don't know what you're going to—I mean— there's levels of escalation that you can determine. So you have a test. From that test, you have a result. After that, you have, you know, a determination, perhaps treatment, right? All those things that come after it. And there's some things you just can't control, right? Um, Get to it. And that's scary to know that at any point in your life, all of a sudden something could go wrong that you never even knew was there or, uh -huh. you know, an underlying condition or something you never knew that maybe you were, yep. you are adept at having because of maybe family history or something like that, uh -huh. right? You don't know. It's, it is a scary thing that one day maybe you get diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. or all of a sudden you find out you have a horrible heart disease, right? You don't know. It's That's that's very scary because then your whole, like right now, I'm 41 years old. I'd like to think I've got a good, at least 20, 30 years left in my life, right? At least. At least. And then maybe then you start worrying about the end of your life cycle. But who knows? 
I could wake up tomorrow with some crazy pain, have to go to the, the hospital, and they, they do a biopsy, and they find out I got cancer, and that would be awful, right? Uh -huh. That's scary shit, for sure, right? Um, You know, or, you know, equally scary would be my wife, that something like that happened to my wife, or maybe to my parents. Now, my parents are not in good health. They're, they are getting up there to the point where I know soon something's going to happen. I just know. Oof. And that's scary, too, to know that eventually I'm going to lose them at some point it's just going to happen you know um that's scary mm -hmm. but you know Very money scary. as well when you're in a situation where you don't see a way out of a situation you're stuck in you know i was in that situation with the amount of debt that i had and it was to the point where like the only way i could even make a payment was to borrow from something else to pay the payment for something i already owe and then you know, coming to a stream what is this? to I tell you guys that I'm in a situation where I can't pay my bills this week and I really need your help. That was what awful is this? scary. It really was. And I'm happy that I'm not in that situation anymore. For years now, I've been removed from it, thankfully. Uh -huh. um, but that was terrifying. You know, now if you want to talk about direct terrifying fear, uh, there we go. probably Finally, the two sorry. car accidents that I was in, the one in high school where my car was totaled and I likely should have died, but I somehow by a miracle survived it. Or there was a time when I was driving home from a Street Fighter tournament in crazy snow and ice and my car lost control and there was no way to control it and it just went right off the road. And at that point, I was like, the wheel, moving the wheel literally does nothing. My hand, my life is in the hands of fate, right? You know, there's crazy <laughs> moments, but I would say oh, any of those could be, you know, scary moments my for me. Hands that were some light? of the scary what? moments. But I would say, oh, and my life is in the hands of fate, right? You know, nothing. And it just went right off the road. Crazy snow and ice, and my okay. car lost control, and uh -huh. there was no way to control it, and it just went right off the road. And at that point, I was like, the wheel, moving the wheel literally does nothing. My hand, my life is in the hands of fate, right? You know, there's crazy moments. But I would say, oh, any of those wow. could be, you know, scary moments for me. That were some of the scariest things that ever happened to me. Oof. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. One final that, question. Oh, what's the last question. question? All right. I want to ask a follow-up question about the video you did with Indian scammers pretending to be with the Department of Education. Okay, shut up. I don't give a shit. All right. That will do it. What a plunge it's been, my friends. Thanks so much for joining me today on this fucking plunge into a car accident. You have heard every mention of the car accident over the 15 years of that content curator's career. We've had ups. We've had downs. We've had one car accident. All right. Thank you for re-upping your membership. I appreciate that. Safeway Shop runs a legend. We've had one accident, two accidents, multiple accidents, passengers, no passengers. We've seen it all, right? You never know what you're going to get here. And uh, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Uh, in terms of where should this go on the iceberg, right? Let's get our iceberg up here. we got to figure out this shit, by the way. So, like, for me, Machinima, let's do it real quick. Might as well, right? Machinima, low level, right? We're talking about here. Machinima we've covered in the past. I'd say that's about here, right? Then we go to CT bucket list. Low level, nothing serious. That goes about here, right? Uh, pro Monkey Spank. Now, Monkey Spank's a deep cut. This is from Dense Sea Scrolls only. I'm going right here with this. Of course, we can talk about it later, but this is just preliminary. Next, Snitchinator. I believe the Snitchinator is on the same level as Monkey Spank because it's that same top. I think actually Monkey Spank might be lower than Snitchinator because Monkey Spank is only from fucking AOL message boards, okay? And uh, I'll, next time before the, before the show, before the next show, I'll have like uh, chat commands for all of these so you can watch the actual episode that we cover all these. Because again, I want this to be only things that we've covered on the show. Pro Jared. Next, next to Alphaism, right? I'd say that's in the same ballpark. But Pro Jared's a bigger name, so I think he should be above. Okay, and we'll come back. We'll we'll, we'll circle back. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, Taco Chan, I think she goes where Snitchinator goes because that is a Dent Sea Scrolls only tale that we learned there, and Faye goes with her as well. That sounds about right to me. Bay is also in this Dent Sea Scrolls tier. I'm going to make this wider as well because we're going to fill up too soon. Now, Jeff the Hero. Now, Jeff the Hero, we mildly covered on this show. Uh, a, a detractor before there was a This Is How You Don't Play. I think that's pretty deep. I want to put it here. 
And of course, if you see anything that outrageous, please let me know. Uh, Gamble is being very weird. I don't know what's going on with that. I'll fix it. But it's working and not working. I don't know. Like behind the scenes, it's working, but it's not showing in the chat. So there you go. Anyways, and finally, Air Raid Lord, the legend Air Raid Lord. Where does Air Raid Lord go? I think above Dent Sea Scrolls stuff for sure. But mm, I'll say right about there. I'd say, I think, uh, right there. I'd say there. And now I need a car. What was it? Four Taurus, I believe. I think it was a Ford Taurus, right? 2001. I think, no, no. 1999 was his first car, but that's close enough for our purposes. Let me get a car picture here for today. <clears throat> so, Ford Taurus 1999 looks something like this beauty. <laughs> Hang on, I'm getting it. Where should this go? Where should the car and the car accident lore go on our iceberg, right? Where does it go? I believe we got our car. I'll get a total one later when I clean it up. I think mm, car accident lore. It's not something he talks about. As, it's not as impactful as Machinima for sure. But I think it's kind of known because of the back injury. Like, do we separate this from back injury? That's another thing we we couldn't decide. But I think it's probably on the same level as Pro Jared. Or here, you know? It's it's one of these two, right? But yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Ford Escort Saga. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the that's the new name of it. <laughs> Car could be with Machinima. Yeah, below Pro Jared. I think that looks good right now. I'm not sure what we're going to cover next, by the way. If you have ideas, let me know. Because the next plunge... I want to do this probably once a week. We'll see, though. But, like, instead of doing the pre-show style broadcast, we'll do this instead. But, anyways, it's been fun. It's been real. It's been cool to just hang out. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining and uh, being a part of this. All those likes, you're fucking legends. So, this stream is going to end, and then I'm going to get the playlist ready and start a normal pre-show style Oh, Sneed, if you've never seen Alpha Omega, check on this channel right now. You'll see it. I'll get the link going next time. But you're all legends. Uh, I'm going to end this stream, and then another stream is going to start shortly after I get the playlist ready. So stay tuned for that if you want to hear the songs and old-style clips. But uh, this was a pre-pre-show. Yes, this is a pre-pre-style show. And after this, we'll get the pre-show, and then we'll get the real show. So you're all fucking legends. Thanks so much for being a part of this. And uh, never forget the car accident story. Thanks for joining me.